in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. If you are a first time listener, you are in for a treat, right? <laughs> you, are in for, you think we're Joe Rogan, huh? You think we're, uh, who else is very credible in this space? Uh, Joe Chris Rogan? D'Elia. Oh, oh, you're going right Nick, into it, huh? Uh, you went right into no. it. Uh, Chris D'Elia, come on that? now. I heard he's your best friend, and you guys, hey, dude, you guys, you, know what? you guys I, like the children. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan, dude. I'm not a not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> of Chris D'Elia. Of Chris D'Elia. <laughs> hey, can we take it from the top? Wow. Welcome to Genius Brain, All right, guys. Let's do that again, wow. guys. In five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Thanks, like child molester. Hey. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. We gotta restart it again. Uh, this episode is called oh. Nick's Inner Thoughts. The last time Nick was on here, he was talking a little bit about the Pope's. In yeah. the Catholic Church and oh. how much he liked watching documentaries of what they do. That's true. So the latest one that I saw was the Jeffrey Epstein documentary. Have you guys watched this? I watched two episodes. Dude, it's it's really dark and it's really fucked, but I feel like everybody needs to watch that documentary. Because... You just like uh, what's called uh, rape documentaries. No, we <laughs> do. Because the hey, first man, time it started with it. that other one where the guy fucks the in, all the generations in the yeah. family tree or whatever. What well, was that one called? Because it's so crazy. It's so fucking nuts to hear about these things. And then, like, you hear about how Jeffrey Epstein just got away with it for his whole entire life and he had everybody in his fucking pocket, dude. He paid off the, the police department in Miami $100,000, like, oh, here's a donation, and nobody would investigate the shit he was doing. Well, and of he course, was if you give me a, somebody... Okay, let me ask you something. What's up? All right, so you're a cop, uh -huh. okay? <laughs> Your name is Officer Dunn. Shit, okay. about right. <laughs> Your name is Officer Dunn. Yeah. Jeffrey, somebody reports Jeffrey Epstein. Right, Epstein. 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 Oh, is that is Epstein. that? Is that Jeff, I have no idea. <laughs> Jeffrey Fostein. Fostein. So he comes in. And yeah, fuck goes, that guy. He goes, "Hey, I'm here to arrest you." He goes, "That's funny. I have four hundred thousand dollars. Are you going to arrest me? Would you arrest him or no?" Well, in the context of what he was doing, yeah, that's for sure. a good person. Because I was the shitty, bro, he was, he was, <laughs> bro, he was trafficking like sixteen-year-old girls, fifteen-year-old girls. And this is what he would do. He would make them come to his house and be like, hey, do you want to like, do you want to make some money giving people massages? And they'd be like, okay. Of course. Exactly. And they're, they're 15. And he would get other 15-year-old girls to get other 15-year-old girls. And they would bring them to his house. And he'd be like, all right, he'll get naked. They'll start massaging him for like a minute. And then he'll, you know. The, the, the rest weird, is history. The and weirdest then, part of that document, because I only watched a couple of episodes. Uh -huh. And the weird part was kind of how they described how it would happen. Yeah. And it's it's like a 1980s, like, creepy movie, right? Yeah. So they'll start, it was a lady that was involved with 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 Jeffrey. It was either his, his wife or his girlfriend, Yeah, his right? girlfriend. And, and she's she, still out and about. Yeah, and she would shit. just massage. She's like, it's okay, don't worry about it. Just just go ahead and fall into it. It's like, what the fuck? Did yeah. somebody write this script? This yeah. terrible script? Yeah. And the girls would just cry, and she would just go about her way, and then nothing would happen to them. Dude. Money is so powerful. People have no idea. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. As long as you have a lot of fucking money, you're almost untouchable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's Absolutely. what happened to that fool. And not only did he have a lot of money, but he would get other celebrities or other people of power to indulge in these services that are highly illegal. And then he would film them, and he has a lot of pretty much, he has blackmail on yeah. all these people. That's why a lot of, I heard that he was like, they were even thinking that he was like intelligence uh, for another country. Yeah, so. and apparently he, he, like that's that's what they were saying about him but like they would show his back room his house and it was just tv monitors in every room every bathroom and did they know about the recordings or he just did it just to have evidence i i heard that well one of the theories i heard was that he would like kind of invite politicians powerful people mm -hmm. and prince some of them knowingly Charles? probably were new were into like little kids and shit and others he was probably like hey there's girls here they would have sex with girls. He'd film them, and then he'd be like, "Hey, by the way, that girl was 16, and I have it recorded. And oh, now shit. you're gonna yeah. do what the fuck I want yeah. you to do, or for whoever. Or he represents, they're or for all himself. fucking little molesters, and, and they want to Which I'm sure there was kids, some of that know? too. But th that's the thing is like that's what's really scary because this documentary focuses on just him, but there's like a network of creepy shit yeah. that happened. Like, he was Dude, just a piece of he it. He was like there's a everybody. lot of weird shit like that going on it's kind of crazy how much he bullshitted his way up the the ladder too yeah. because he didn't graduate from college either nope. yeah he did he didn't graduate he committed a bunch of fraud apparently and he was stealing money do you remember the 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 store the limited the limited two yeah 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 do you yeah. remember those stores um and i guess he was in business with a guy that sold that chain and that franchise for like billions of dollars this guy was yeah. a billionaire 
And I guess what he was doing, he's a hedge fund manager. I don't know what the fuck that means. What the fuck? Exactly. But apparently he was he stole about like forty million dollars from this dude, <gasps> and he didn't even know until afterwards, right? Allegedly, he didn't know. Yeah. And um, and then he bought an island <laughs> with his house, like this mansion on it, and that's where he would fly out like all these people of uh, power, I guess, celebrities. Bill Clinton would go to, yeah, yeah, every bro. Bill Clinton you're talking was about, linked. You talking about Dog. Bill? Bill? He went like two hundred, like, like twenty eight times or something. Yeah, and it was on the flight logs, all this stuff. Two hundred and twenty eight. That's a lot of times, Bill. And, 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 <laughs> bro, that's a lot. Too many times, bro. Too many times. And it was such, it's such a specific number, you know. Because if he went like maybe twice. They'll be like, listen, I just went out there. Just go check it out. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, how many times did you go? 228 times. <laughs> I, I, I think it was 28. I, I, was I, think, I, I don't 28. know. I don't know. It was 28. But even 28 is a lot of fun. It's a lot. To go check out yeah. the island. Bro, yeah. <laughs> where people were fucking He kids. knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, what are you talking about? Of course he did. And then on top of that, it's like all the girls that he was hanging out with were all like, they 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 would show pictures of them when they were when Why they were are people teenagers? like up in arms about that shit if they know that Bill Clinton was going to this? That's, that's people, what I'm People were freaking out for a while, but it's the, it's, it's it's the media the age, cycle, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's the age we live in. Like something crazy will happen and it'll be big news and then something else crazy happens and it kind of just social media. It just kind of like filters its way out. Coronavirus came and then Coronavirus Clinton, comes and then, and then you know, it just, it, always something new or crazy will happen. And, but it wasn't really covered in mainstream media. Yeah, like, no one's talking really about that. Well. Uh, but it's the most obvious they killed this dude story oh, 100%. of all time. Do you, do you know, are you familiar with Alex Jones? Yeah. So Who doesn't know Alex exactly. Jones? Alex Jones, I, baby. I, my buddies are really into the stuff he says. And a lot of the times I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And they were always trying to convince me of Pizzagate. Do you know what Pizzagate was? No. Apparently it's like people in the White House or, or like in Hollywood or whatever, just higher ups in general. They're all connected. And they would just have human trafficking like teenage girls come to the white house apparently and have sex with all these politicians and the white house yeah apparently that's that's what the story is yeah i used to tell this dude like yo you're fucking full of shit like what are you talking about that's nuts right as soon as i finished seeing this documentary and seeing how many ties of jeffrey epstein was with all these people on affidavits and legal documents and also when uh when all the Black Lives Matter stuff was happening, when Anonymous released all these information, I think one of them was the affidavit from Donald Trump and Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein. And on there, there's all these cases of specific cases of all these girls talking about how Donald Trump like raped these girls, you know, and was involved in human trafficking, all this stuff. Could you imagine what it's like to be touched by Donald Trump? Dog. That dude it, is oh, disgusting. They have so, so much good. footage of them together. Like at a nightclub, and it's like a news, it's like CNN or some shit, but this is like back in the 90s, or yeah. And they're filming them, and they're like, He's like, you could hear him mouthing, like, Oh, she's pretty cute. What about her over there? Yeah, and they're like, like They're like, hey, bro, it's, like it's, it's weird. so weird. Yeah, it's really, he's it's like, so weird. Ooh, he's Donald Trump, like, Ooh, yeah, yeah. And Epstein's like, Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, Damn, these dudes are rapist molester guys. Do they have 100%. any logs of Donald Trump going to that island? Uh, I, I don't think, think so. I well, he's I kicking with them, so I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I he think, did. I think. They, I don't know if they have like he's on the, a legal document on an affidavit. Yeah, I saw that too. Involved with Jeffrey Epstein, talking about how he was. How much you want to bet? Fucking Donald Trump got Epstein killed. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. I bet. I bet a lot of people wanted that fool dead because yeah. I bet he was he was willing to make a deal. Right. If I was him though, when I went Hell to, yeah. when he, when I went to jail before I went to jail, I would have just released all the footage. Yeah. Why the fuck wouldn't you do that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why he. Uh, you know he he should have known that he was going to die. <laughs> like yeah, you know. right. Like you, for a fact, maybe I, he, maybe he felt like there was a way out for him because he had that leverage or something. But, I don't know. but, but yeah, there's up. also the fact you're that right. Like, he should have released. He's probably shit. just a fucking sociopath, and he thinks he's like, well, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll there's get another out of this, conspiracy you know? theory that like it was just so that he didn't really die. They just act like he died, and then he they just released mm. him and he got out. But that's like we're getting into. That's oh, another. That's be, just, but it's yeah. a juicy one. It's like, yeah. ooh, oh, that's what yeah. they said about Hitler. He snuck out that's the what they said about door. Hitler. They think he was in like Argentina or like or like Chile or something. Seriously? Hitler. Yeah. So people believe that Hitler's still alive because he he faked his death and he went to Argentina, mm -hmm. a yeah, place where some, people where he would hate looking at them. Not Argentina. No, <laughs> I, I think it's Bolivia or like, white, Bolivia or like uh, Chile or something. I forgot what no, it was. It was Argentina. It was Argentina. Uh, yeah, because Argentinians are light skinned They're really and they have a huge like German population over there now. And it's like all of it is very like Nazi style, 
uh, architecture and things like that. It's crazy. That's the, that's what the Tim Kennedy has a show on the on the History Channel where he goes and he searches for Hitler in Argentina. When do and, you when do you work, Nick? Hey, dude. <laughs> dude what's going Let me on, ask bro? you something. When, when, I, when do you work? When I, when I do go, you pay bills? No, I don't. <laughs> when I, when I go when I go for like when I do my cardio when I go for runs I. Put in my headphones and I listen to all this stuff. I wonder how he pays bills sometimes. It's yeah, like, it's like well, goes, David's let me, my t- sugar let me tell you daddy. what I did yesterday. I was like, okay, I calculated all the hours of documentaries you've watched. <laughs> so far, you've only slept two hours <laughs> and you've never worked at all. It, so it, what the this, fuck? This is what happens when me and Tiff we we deep dive on this stuff. Like yeah. we we go deep, bro. We're deep on the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. It's the funny Epstein how stuff is crazy. he didn't kill himself, bro. No, no. It's 100%. funny how involved he is in this shit. But when I ask him just to do simple stuff for his own business, he goes, "Bro, I get to it. <laughs> I get to it's it." Too much work, like, bro, dude, I'm not gonna post it. all like workouts every day. He's so what fucking you, annoying because he'll come out. He'll say some of the stupidest shit to me. Like I, I've told him like since I first met him two and a half years ago, <laughs> what to do. Just yesterday, he goes, "You know what I need to do, man? I need to start doing online coaching." You bitch made motherfucker. I told you that for the past two years. I was like, David, have you heard this thing called Instagram where you can post stuff and the people will follow you and they'll like all your stuff. And he tells me as if I haven't told him that before. Nice. I want to slice his throat right now. Do I it. Will Je- fucking do it, bro. I will Jeffrey Epstein you right now. I swear to God. Uh, fucking do it, bro. Bring it. Fucking do it. Damn. I don't have enough. Yeah, see? Oh, he's so Damn. aggressive, dude. Maybe yeah, I need dude. some alcohol, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. give me that some monster. Just that monster, dude. I don't want to waste monster this on energy. you, you piece of shit. Yeah, man. But uh, <laughs> I'm just going to throw it up anyway afterwards. <laughs> but hottest news right now. And it's so funny because... <laughs> wow. Right to the wow. segue, man. Right into Jeffrey Epstein. Hottest Epstein's news. Hottest news right Damn. now. Chris motherfucking D'Elia. Now, I have no ties to this man, no connection whatsoever. Never spoke to the dude. I only know people who know who are friends with him. I will say this. I know nothing about him, but the man looks a little rapey. <laughs> Case closed. Next topic. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you know more about it, obviously, since you don't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't work. So I've, uh, Polaroids. Here at home. Oh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of Polaroids, fucking strings attached to him and shit. <laughs> he, he wasn't connected <laughs> he got, with these women. He has the fucking uh, post-its with the red line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking Matthew McConaughey and True Detective and shit. <laughs> I love, love that a fucking shit, goatee and a fucking so, so good, dude. I, I'm just smoking the whole time. <laughs> like a fucking Keystone Light and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know, uh, well, Chris D'Elia has been in a lot of hot water. Obviously, every single like comic out there who knows him, who knows of him, has been like putting out their opinion about the situation, which I always found very odd because if I don't know, I guess if you're like a really close friend of his. I don't know why it's so pertinent for you to go out and just start telling your opinion about the situation, right? Seems to me very opportunistic, but I don't know how Hollywood works because obviously I'm not a part of it. But not yet. He, uh, let me tell you something else. I'm too, yet, I'm boy. too honest to be a part of Hollywood. You know <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> yeah, my shit out there publicly. Shit. But uh, yeah. something leaked. Some well, okay. So there was a young 16 year old girl at the time mm-hmm. that put up this tweet about him about how he's a perv or whatever and that yeah. shit just started to go viral and basically what she was saying is that he was quote unquote like grooming her or soliciting her for sex mm-hmm. knowingly or knowing that she was a 16 year old and from then on all these other people started releasing yeah. stuff about him and their interactions with him which i read a couple of things and some of them were kind of odd because number one fuck it i don't have to do a disclaimer it was really funny because some of these girls were like 25 and like when i was 23 yeah Christine came up to me and he hit on me and i'm yeah. like and he was yes, so rude you were 23 and that's, that's, yeah. the, and that's the end of the story yeah and then she's talking about oh yeah he was he, he tried to pick me up with this sleazy pickup line and it was so fucking gross and i'm like and what what yeah. happened Continue. are you trying to are you trying to say this is a me too situation where he tried to pick you up at a bar yeah i'm like next move on and i yeah. hate that shit because if this girl did get solicited for sex as a 16 year old girl it makes her story look whack because you keep on bringing out your bullshit stories right. exactly. it's like what that's, the fuck is yeah. this that's the problem is that like the false the, the people that are faking the funk fuck up the real accusation exactly, it, it diminishes dude. the actual movement and it's like what the fuck don't muddy the waters you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah. but, some like, of these girls, I just want to tell them to shut the fuck up. Like, your yeah. story doesn't count right now. And what sucks, It was a though, bad date. Is what you're saying right now <laughs> is very reasonable. It's, it's super reasonable and logical. And logical yeah. is the word. Uh, <laughs> it's logical. But because you say that, it, people will just be like, you're a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. It's not just patriarchy. Bang, bang, bang. And it's like, then there's no dialogue. You but know the I mean? funny thing is, I'm, I'm, not mis- I'm, on, the, I'm on the female side right yeah. now. I'm saying that this woman is a piece of shit because she's 
taking away the power from the original girl's story, which her story, if it's true, should be taken very seriously. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely. When you talk about a bad date that you had with Chris D'Elia and you got creepy vibes from him, it's like, are you just what? What? Why did you put that out? What does that do? It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't get offer any damning evidence. It doesn't make him look terrible. It makes you look. It makes you look terrible. It makes you look like the person that's doing this for quote unquote attention because you were not 16. You were 23 years old. He didn't, what did he, did he drug you? Right. Did he, uh, did he uh, coerce you into something? Was he physical with you or was it? And it's just a story about a terrible date with a sleazy guy. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, that sucks that you went on a sleazy date with a sleazy guy. I understand. But we're yeah. talking about a girl who was solicited for sex at 16. Yeah. So let's not talk about that. Maybe you could talk about that on your blog on Zanga. <laughs> <laughs> Zanga! <laughs> Zanga! Yo, yeah. this episode is brought to you by Zanga. Zanga. <laughs> they, Zanga, dude. They type in Zanga.com, nothing pops up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I used to write my feelings on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, let's pull up Zanga. Let's pull up David So Zanga. You cannot. Yeah. I, I made can, sure of it. I, I bought the company and deleted everything. I was trying to sign sign back into my Zanga, right? So I could see my feelings. So you could delete everything? <laughs> <laughs> Doug, it was all gone. Give it wow. give us a little sneak peek of like what it was. What it were you writing about? It's basically all my vlogs. <laughs> it's, I've been doing the same thing since I was 13. You're like, Karen's a stupid fucking bitch. I fucking hate her. I would be writing some shit. I'd be talking mad shit about like some of my personal friends too because they would piss me <laughs> off that day because mm. I would use it as a journal. But the funny thing about men is that, especially I think when I was younger, having a journal was, as we used to say back in the day, Fagotti. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Fagotti. Fagotti. Yeah. A little guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we would say like, yo... <laughs> Only Fagatis <laughs> would write journals and logs. But then at the same time, we're over here on Zanga writing our fucking raps. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we get found and shit. Listen, I'm on Zanga. You ain't want to fuck with me because I'm a bang you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Where's Alex at, dude? Damn, Damn I fuck with you, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I used I to write all my you. feelings out on Zanga thinking, uh, you know what? People need to hear this shit. Absolutely. Yeah. I hate hot pockets. <laughs> like all this stupid Little shit. Little do you know that like that's actually what got you famous on YouTube was everyone's Zanga. Well, it's your Zanga. Zanga I remember uh, people Everyone's who were really Zanga. popular on Zanga back in the day was girls who used to write poetry. Oh my God. That was like that the, was the... Dude, I had a girl one time in middle school. Uh, she, like, you know, when you had crushes in middle school and stuff like that and we like, she would like liked me or something like that. And I was like, oh, I like you too. But I was like scared. Like, I didn't know how to interact with girls. So I would just avoid her. And then she <laughs> called me one day and she was like, I wrote you a poem. And she was like already, like I picked up the phone. She was like already like about to cry. And then she read me this poem and I was sitting outside on my deck like, Thank uh, you for that. <laughs> <laughs> hung up and was like, that was the weirdest fucking thing I've bro, ever experienced. Bro, this dude has girls writing him poems. It was middle school. I've never hey, that had doesn't a, matter, bro. doesn't matter. I've never had a single girl ever. write me a poem. Ever. I once opened up a napkin from a girl and it said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I got. Zanga sucks. And Zanga. I didn't even know her. I was like, fuck <laughs> you. Who's this? And it was the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> it was a 45-year-old woman. You. <laughs> you can't prove it was me. It was that's Mrs. Wachowski. She wrote, fuck you. I was like, <laughs> I, closed, <laughs> I closed the napkin and I wiped my tears with it. I was like, oh, fuck this oh, shit. Man. <laughs> you were saying some interesting stuff about the whole situation because a lot of new information came out about the girl who originally put the uh, the tweet out. Yeah, so the first, I thought it was odd because whenever, I don't know, it's people like to jump to conclusions a little bit because this stuff is, it's a very sensitive topic for sure, right? It's like when you accuse somebody of being a pedophile, that comes with, a lot like it's oh, you yeah, want to make there. sure it's like people, the worst thing that you could be yeah is like a fucking yeah. pedophile you want to make sure this stuff is confirmed or whatever right but when the allegations are out you read the messages and the proof that this lady presented this girl presented it's pretty damning yeah yeah it's it's damning but it's also the first i think it was like the first girl that 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 put it out it just was like you know you tell chris is kind of like being a creep and it's like yo let's make out and he's asking her if you want to hang out but it seemed very like normal can i just say this for people who don't know you should already know if regular people go into other people's dms and they hit they hit on them yes. all the time could you imagine how much celebrities do this shit yeah because they understand what they can do with their quote-unquote power of mm -hmm. course or what they can do with their fandom like their reach is so much so larger. much bigger yeah. of course but continue but um yeah the the first initial messages it was just like hey what are you doing tonight you want to come hang out blah blah blah, blah. you know and that was her proof for saying he groomed me as a 16 year old, yada, yada, yada. But there's also, there's no pretense of like how old he knew that she was. And apparently she didn't, he didn't know according to him and all the stuff that he released. 
and I guess he released it a couple of days ago, like his his legal team released it or something. But and then there was another um there was an exchange where they were talking and she says, Oh, you're 17. And he goes, Oh, well, you're too young. Sorry, I thought you were 18. Like you came to my show. Yeah. Uh, you have to be 18 to come to the show. Sorry, my bad. Bye. And then oh, never... so they had that conversation. There's one conversation. Yeah. That was from actually from a different girl. Okay. And then the first girl that released everything, you know, it was just like they never they never met up, apparently. So she was saying he solicited me for nudes. And then I guess she sent him like a picture of a panda or something to like be funny or whatever. Yeah. And then after that, I guess the conversation ended, you know. And then the new evidence that came out was an email saying from her asking him saying hey i'm 21 now i'm dtf and it was like word for word <laughs> and it oh, was she wrote that the girl that, that put out the original thing she One wrote of the that girls, yeah what she the hell? says i'm 21 now i'm dtf and i guess there was no response which doesn't still but that doesn't make it okay to hit up a, a young girl but yeah. it, it does doesn't. if she's painting the picture of like this dude was just a complete creep who like solicited me blah blah, blah and then four years later you're like hey let's fuck right now it kind of like because she was painting this image that it was like all him being a yeah. weirdo, but still not cool. But it does, it's information yeah, that's necessary. It, well, see, that's the thing. It's like if you're gonna, if you have evidence on somebody, it's like you should be able to, you know, post all of it, right? Because it's, it, put the whole story out there. Yeah, well, yeah right. Because the, the logic behind that is this, I guess, from what I'm seeing from my perspective, is if, if this woman went out of her way, right? <clears throat> to say that this guy is a creep he was trying to groom me when i was younger but then four years so he ignores you for three or four years and then <laughs> out of nowhere you go hey i'm 21 now i'm down to fuck now it puts down this the, the shift of responsibility to the to the girl now yeah yeah it's right. like now now there's a little bit of responsibility on your part yeah. because if he was grooming you or whatever but he didn't keep in contact with you for x amount of years but then you know lo and behold you were ignored and then you said i'm down to fuck yeah and he didn't fuck you Right. It's like, wait, what 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 is the basis of your argument now? Yeah. Right? Right. Are you exactly. saying that you didn't want him and then he kept on pressing you? Yeah. But then you approached him and said you wanted to fuck him. Yeah. So this is where it goes into that conversation where people are having online. I'm not having this conversation. Honestly, with this whole Chris D'Elia thing, I I don't know him, so I don't give a fuck about him. You know, yeah. so whatever happens to him happens to him. Yeah. But <clears throat> for in this situation, there's this conversation of, you know, people have this talk of do when a girl's like 17 or 18 years old, does she know what's going on, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what, I've been reading a lot of these comments on Twitter. Because like, that's, I, that's the main argument, right? It's like when I was 16 or something, if I wanted to fuck a celebrity or an older guy, like I would do whatever I can to fuck them. Like yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to fuck. Mm -hmm. But obviously the responsibility goes on the adult to be like, hey, you're a child. You don't know what you're doing. Exactly. Stop yeah. this stuff. Right. So Definitely. that's where that responsibility goes on Chris D'Elia. And he doesn't get excused from that behavior. Mm -hmm. But also just to mention, just to just to go back to that is – so there is a responsibility of that girl. If she, if her intentions were to fuck him, right? Yeah. It's not this story of her painting it out to him soliciting her yeah. for, for whatever sex. Right, exactly. It was you were soliciting him <laughs> the other way, or there was mutual in that type of sense. Yeah. Right. Chris D'Elia is still wrong for it, but you- Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, a not... and some of the stuff is like, it seems mutual on the outside from just like what is shown, right? But a lot of the times too, it's like from what that girl did, I guess the first chick- it seems like it's cherry picking, right? It's cherry picking. Because she didn't show she the had. whole thing. Exactly, she, she didn't exactly. show the message where she says, hey, by the way, I'm 21. I'm down to fuck. Exactly, right? But there's also other things where it is a little creepy. There, I read one where he was hitting up this girl, and I guess she was like, oh, I'm 17, mm -hmm. right? And then he goes, oh, sorry, too young. And then stopped talking to her. He literally <laughs> DM'd her a year from that date, like a year and like a couple of days. And was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> that's 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 crazy. Cre I'll say it's this. creepy. It's creepy, but it's not against the law. Exactly. Not against the law. But see, that's what's that's what that's why that that fetish. If you have like an eighteen, like yeah, fetish is so creepy because yeah. or it's 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 a because it's like I'm almost a pedophile. Uh, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. that's part of the you know, exactly. but, which is weird. But you're right. It's not illegal. It's a weird line. You know why eighteen? Like, well, like, what's the what's what's why is that such a special? It's because he too, it's because he watched too much fucking porn, and every time you look on porn, is a girl says eighteen year old. Barely. You know, she's thirty six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're a 36 year old woman, and, and the and fact that that's like a category, like yeah, barely, barely legal, legal. Like, barely, barely, barely legal. Like, what's up with what that? is barely legal? Almost mean? a pedophile. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and like, fuck. what's creepier than saying barely legal, man? Like, yeah. that's so fucking kind of weird. Fuck this barely legal girl. You know, this goes into that conversation Damn, where. where... <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. What the fuck? 
Because this goes to the conversation of the whole Louis C.K. thing, right? When Louis C.K. was, you know, masturbating and just asking some a girl, if, like, yeah. can I jack off in front of you? And then they, they people got upset about that because of they're saying that um, these male celebrities are using their power and their influence to yeah. kind of hold these people at hostage, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And um, I think people are just kind of tapping into that mentality of this is a celebrity yeah. and he's willingly knowing – that he's a celebrity and he has a certain amount of leverage with yeah. these girls. So if he does want to have sex with them, he can, whether they're underage or not. Yeah. And the weird thing is, is I don't think the way he looks helps him out at all. No, definitely. No, yeah. He, he's, he's, he like looks like a douchebag. Yeah. You know what I mean, he looks creepy. And so people were saying this dude was like using nudes that these girls would send him to like blackmail these chicks. You know what I mean? Oh, I really? Didn't, I didn't hear well, that. that's there, 10 times see, worse. See, there's a, yeah, what the see, that's the other thing though too, is like there's a lot of other stuff that comes out, but people are focusing on the pedophilia side. But there's all these other women that are like, my whole thing is my idea is like, where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. Right. If Jeffrey Epstein wasn't fucking human trafficking chicks, they wouldn't be able to make multiple documentaries, a fucking uh-huh. five part hour series documentary on how he was. Right. Hundred percent. And if there's like twenty, probably more than that, I saw like a gang. Right. It was like maybe like thirty or forty people coming out talking about like their experience with them. A lot of them. A good amount of them were like bullshit, but then a lot of them were like, this is problematic, right? And and even from the statement that he released, uh, talking about like, you know, I apologize, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to be this man anymore, yada, yada, yada. You know, like, that's one thing. But some of the stuff that like came out, whether you want to believe it or not, it's up to the, the reader, right? But at the same time, it's just things like just super disrespectful to these chicks. Like, he'll invite this chick to come over, have sex with her for like five minutes and he's like all right like kind of get out <laughs> like things like that and it, you know whether you think that's right or not that's on you right i mean i hear so many weird stories about celebrities and <clears throat> that i don't i don't know if it's true or true or not but like i heard the story about fucking justin bieber how justin bieber would uh he would bring girls to his place have them go up to his room and because he now he's a born-again christian right so his wings his oh, angel what? wings are out is he married uh, this is before he got married oh, okay. to, uh, was it one of the Baldwin's daughters or some shit like that? Oh, I don't know. Alec Baldwin's daughter or some shit? I don't know. I, don't know. I could be making shit up. You're probably right, though. You're probably <laughs> yeah. right. Doug Baldwin's daughter. Doug Baldwin. <laughs> yes. So Doug Baldwin's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, related, but, you know, yeah. same last name, whatever. He's one of the cousins. Nobody ever heard about him. <laughs> but he would have them sit down, kneel in front of them, and pray for their sins. Hell yeah, before. dude. And he would ask them. If if they have accepted Lord, uh, uh, their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into their life, that's what's up, dude. Right, and if she said yes, they would fuck. <laughs> that's crazy. And so I heard this. I from, respect it though. You know, and I heard this from somebody who at the time like, used to work. Uh, who used finish. to work? Um, Amen. Amen. <laughs> for uh, a travel visa company, right? So whenever he wanted to go travel somewhere else to do a concert, he had to get a visa for it or whatever. And um, she would sit there, and he would he would make her sit and wait until he was done fucking this girl and this is like her hearing this shit watching this like model chick go up and he would pray for her soul asking her she's and tell tell her about jesus christ and then fuck her and then make her wait there the whole time and then sign the papers and never leave wow wow yeah so you know this is it's a different world right it's a different world i mean it's kind of weird that he's like are you a christian no Okay, I'm still gonna have sex with you, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you still gotta sign these papers out. Yeah, like, the that power of Christ compels you. <laughs> <laughs> like this doesn't make him a creep. It's just oh, really like, weird. It's just uh, weird. Yeah. It's just yeah. really fucking but, I mean, weird. When you think about like a dude like Justin Bieber who's been famous since he was 13, whatever the fuck, yeah. like his whole he's never had a normal child. Like that dude is out of his mind 100. Mm-hmm. percent So something like that doesn't surprise me. Well, all I, those a lot of those fuckers are are weirdo fucks, and then you give them that little edge of power, mm-hmm. like yeah, of course, and. and he, Humans don't do well with power at, at all. No, definitely. And it's so easy definitely to get not. corrupted. Like you have to constantly be checked. So if you've just been running rampant, then why yeah. wouldn't you fucking be like, let's pray our father and then I especially, put my dick in your butt? Especially if you're, <laughs> like, if you're Justin crazy. Bieber, bro. Like if out of all the stars in the past like 10 years, he's probably one of like top five biggest stars of all time in the, in the past 10 years, right? One of the weird comments I used to get to people were like, well, he was like, oh, some people are going to be very careful about saying – um, talking about the stuff so they don't get shit on them it's like well first of all what the fuck are you doing then yeah ex- like, what, exactly like, exactly what the fuck yeah. are you doing i was like i have no problem saying this shit because you can look through all my dms and the only thing i talk to about random women is hey what's the recipe for that food you put up <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean that's it or girls like, coming to you for advice or something like exactly. that. exactly right? i got nothing you could try to dig shit on me 
I got nothing. Yeah. Women don't like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Even when I tried, they didn't accept it. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Raycon, my friends. Do you have earbuds with strings and wires attached to them? What are you thinking? Do you also poop in a hole in the ground? I bet you use a toilet because that is the technologically advanced way of doing things when you go poopy. Well, the same thing goes for your earbuds and your comfort. I have used earbuds without wires, specifically my Raycon's for quite a while now. I use it when I jog, I use it when I work out, when I hit a bag. Um, whenever I need to listen to a podcast on my six to seven mile walks, my Raycon earbuds are the ones that come with me. Did I say earbuds? I meant earbuds. Well, here's a few facts for you guys just to keep you guys enticed and interested in the earbuds that I use. Raycon wireless earbuds, by the way, start off at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. I use them, they sound great. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds are the best ones yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And that for me is very important. I hate road noise when I'm walking outside, specifically because I live in the city. And in the city, there's a lot of road noise and it's just enough so I could hear for my dangers, but I don't want to hear honking constantly when I'm trying to listen to my Genius Brain podcast. So check it out. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash brain. That's buyraycon.com slash brain for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash brain. If, so, if a story came out of be, about me right now, they said, well, David So uh, had a, a harem of women that he used to fuck. The first thing people would say is, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bullshit. Said, bullshit. I'm like, no, I did. I, I meet two people. They're like, Okay. Yeah, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> With what power? You drove a Honda Element for four years. <laughs> Who wants that? Oh my god, dude. That's uh, like wearing flip flops and socks. So that's why you do that. I see. I see you, dude. Yeah, man. I, I make sure you women cover your like, tracks, baby. That's right. That's why Mariel trusts me. She's like, I barely want you. Yeah. <laughs> for real. She's like, what are you gonna get? <laughs> Life is great. Our <laughs> ladies have a lot in common. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a shit, dude. I talk to men. That's yeah, what know. I do. I talk to men. I talk baby. to baby. Come on. Come on, man. Let me solicit that peen peen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, but so, you know, baby. there's just a lot of people doing weird shit, man. There's whatever, a lot of weird shit. Whatever I, kinks you have, I guess, but at the same time, it's uh But see, this part of the problem too is that like it's nice that we can sit here and have a conversation about this. This is what we should be doing is yeah. having yeah. a conversation. But on social media, shit is just all about outrage or like about like there's no real conversations happening. It's either black or white. You're on A team, B team, exactly. blah, 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 blah. If you even try to get nuanced, you're instantly a fucking mm -hmm. you're, you're, the, you're Satan himself. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's part of the issue, too. Uh, whether Chris D'Elia did this shit or not, if he did it, obviously, that's fucked up and that's weird. But there should still be due process and we should still have nuanced thinking and be able to yeah. have a dialogue because that's yeah. really always ultimately the solution. And it's not just with Chris D'Elia, but it's with, even with like all the George Floyd stuff, everything yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Like there's a lot of right, obviously Black Lives Matter, clearly, yeah, yeah. dude, yes. Yeah. Who the fuck, if you argue against black people mattering, you're an idiot, yeah. right? But like we all still need to be able to, to talk you know like we still have to have dialogue and that's 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 what scares me the most about all these situations is that it's like one fucking thing after another of just outrage and just boom boom boom, boom. if you don't agree with this then you're a piece of shit blah blah blah, blah. and there's no fucking it's like because yeah. we're like in the country like we're in a big relationship right and if you just immediately your partner we can't break up with each other we're here yeah. we're in this fucking relationship if you just shun your your girlfriend out or your boyfriend out, like that's obviously not the way to have a healthy relationship. Exactly. You hate each other. You have to fucking sit down and talk to each other. You know? yeah. I think the hard part is, is like the, the conversation part is hard to have because I think from the, the perspective of like the black community, it's like we've been trying to have this conversation for so fucking long. Oh, right. And now it's like, I'm tired of I'm tired of having to explain to people yeah. what this feels like. Even if you see video, like damning evidence of this video of George Floyd, right? Yeah. The first thing I said when George Floyd was murdered was, I guarantee you tomorrow there's going to be a article about his past, yeah. right? And they said, George Floyd, when he like 10 years ago, held a, a, a pregnant woman at gunpoint 
Uh, he had a history. But she was of drugs. tripping though. She was tripping, dude. <laughs> they didn't even ask if she deserved it. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's Don't a you joke. fucking take that sound <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. No, but but that's Late. but this David is what happens, it, right? <laughs> I was joking, not David. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is the stuff that happens, right? And so be, because like that conversation is so hard to have, because no matter what, there's always a reason, right? And you know, people are finding this case of this kid, Elijah McCain. Elijah yeah, McCain, there's not a single ounce of evidence that you could find against this kid. Now it's hard for people to be like, oh, but what was his past like? But people are still gonna fucking do it, yeah. man. That's the sad and this, part. And the thing is, they look at that situation and they still find something, right? They yeah. go, well, if he wasn't flailing his arms, this kid who was on the fucking spectrum, who was walking home with a ski mask on in Colorado, of all fucking places. Yeah, dude. My God, my bad. Right. The ski fucking state. You know what I mean? Yeah. He has yeah. a ski mask, God forbid. Yeah. He it's walks negative home, 13 degrees. Slam him like- to the floor. Four, three to four cops weighed down on him. He's 140 fucking pounds. He's screaming for his fucking life, throws up, pop him full of ketamine for like a 220 pound male. Oh. He's 140 pounds and he dies. These cops are not in jail. Right. The paramedic is not in trouble. Uh, the EMT or whatever is also not in trouble as well. So, and then there's still people who say, but. So this is why that conversation is hard to have. So even of when course. like the evidence is so fucking clear, people want to be like, let's discuss this. There's there is no there is no medium ground for whether racism is right or wrong. Yeah. So that's why that conversation is hard to have. I, I think like that conversation is easier to have for people like you because you're so open minded, right? A lot of people, <clears throat> I think like open minded people are easy to have a conversation with, but I I don't think that reflects a majority of the people in this world. And we see that in social media so often. Facebook, Twitter, whatever. People say some of the dumbest shit on Twitter. Like yeah. I, it, Twitter annoys me so much that I, I enjoy watching it. Like I do, I enjoy reading the shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know how many times I read something unpopular opinion, and it's not even an unpopular opinion, just yeah. so they could get likes. They go, unpopular opinion, water hydrates you. They're like, oh my god, yes, <laughs> like, queen, yes, yes. yes. Like retweet. I feel that, this. girl. I been <laughs> It's like I will slice you at your kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> so and and it's also like the other side. Like people will say crazy stuff crazy stuff that deserve to be checked and there's still a community of people that are like oh my god i totally agree with whatever you're saying yeah. and going back to like the chris D'Elia stuff um with all the stuff that came out it was because i saw it like right somebody texted me was like yo look up chris D'Elia on twitter so i looked it up and it was, it was just happening at the moment and it was just so crazy whether he's guilty or not right it was just crazy to see how many people were just jumping down this guy's throat you know and that happens all the time, like whoever, yeah. right? But at the same time, it, it was just crazy to see whether you agree with it or not. It was just wild to see all these different people come out, talk about his comedy. And, 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 and you know, Chris that- situation too also goes in that same breath of women being very tired of the shit, yeah. right? Because this definitely. is stuff that they have definitely. to, they, they, they constantly have to go through this every day. Like when they are sexually assaulted, when they're raped, something happens to them. And a lot of times nobody fucking believes them. And nobody fucking they believes them, right? on them. And it's them. It's, it's because of what they wore, because mm-hmm. of what they had. And they have to keep on saying, it doesn't matter what the fuck I wear or not. Like you have no right to my body, Yeah. right? So because they have to keep on doing this repetitiously, this is where that anger and that fervor comes yeah. from. It's not right. from something that happens overnight. It's something that they had to store in for a very, very yeah. fucking long right. time. Years Absolutely. and hundreds the, of years the, of resentment. The, the anger is, is super justifiable. I think yeah. It, yeah. it's it's right. Yeah, I get it. You're fucking pissed and you're like, fuck this. I'm tired. Of, like you said, with the black community explaining that and no one listening. Like, what the fuck? How long have we been hearing about this shit yeah. and, mm-hmm. the, and nothing's happened, you know? Um, but I think part of the problem is is i think they're right i i mean i think that like obviously racism there's no black or white when it comes to racism racism yeah. is fucking wrong yeah. there's no in between on that issue in and of itself but the problem is is that we get on these fucking teams yeah and it's like it's like when you like it, i always relate it back to a relationship because i've had girlfriends where like like especially the bad relationships where like you you have all this like baggage in in the relationship where like you you're pissed about something that happened fucking three yeah. months ago or whatever, and you guys get in an argument about something else. But like, and you kind of know she's right, but because you're like fuck this bitch, like yeah. I will mm. disagree till the end. Like, and you, now you know you're wrong, but like I'm still just gonna fight you because you were wrong about this thing twenty years, whatever. You know, yeah. there's like a lot of that just like baggage fucking arguments happening yeah. where where like people are not not i'm not saying like for the people that are like on the conservative side yeah like they just don't want to agree with anything that's liberal yeah, yeah. so yeah. even though a exactly. lot, i'm sure a lot exactly. of conservatives there's probably pe- people that are like middle conservatives that are, agree that like pr- police brutality is a problem and there is racism I'm, they're not all 
fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. racist. And they they want to, some of them I'm sure want to, but then they hear some other crazy shit that comes from the left and they they associate, like, if I agree with this, then that means I'm agreeing with that. And it just becomes too much of the team. Like, yeah. there's just no... Yeah. There's like, a lot of uh, you know? missed, missed opportunities, right? And I and I and I do understand too where where some people have this issue of like, well, when we kind of attack this these type of topics with a lot of rage and anger, there's a lot of missed opportunity for communication. So when we talk to these people and there's people who want to learn, and you just automatically say, well, if you're not on my side, fuck you, right? Yeah. Like exactly. you've already lost them, exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. So those missed opportunities are very sad, and I and I, and I get that too because sometimes when I see people who I believe have to get flamed because once you start taking away some shit from them, then they go, oh, this might be a problem. Yeah. Because many times before people have gotten away with their shitty behavior so many times yeah. until they got flamed. Because even right. in Chris D'Elia's yeah. case, yeah. right? So Chris D'Elia, let's say, let's say he's the biggest creeper on earth, right? And then you have a bunch of friends who are around you who listen to these stories that he does and they just laugh. They go, ha, 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 whatever. That's a really dope story. So you fuck this girl, then you come in her eye and then you kick her out in the middle of the street and they're like, oh, that's a great stand-up set. Move on, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And now you take away their friends and it's just him telling a story to a bunch of strangers. It's like, that's a very fucked up situation. But because he gets to live in the protection of his circle and he oh. gets to keep doing this over and over because nobody's going to stop him. He's in a bubble. He's in a small little bubble. Yeah. And then people kind of feed off that type of energy. It's it's very hard for somebody to step out of the comfort zone and tell a friend, hey, you're being fucked up. Right. Yeah. Right. And so because of that, these situations sometimes have to happen. Right. Yeah. I, I even say it with some of the riots. Um, I don't agree with the riots, obviously, but I've said on this podcast before, it's Peaceful protesting, I really do believe in it. I do think it works. Yeah. But yeah. How, how would the megaphone of this event have happened in such grandeur, in such a big way, if these riots didn't happen? Right. Right. Because nope. then they're like, oh, I think these people are pissed. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Because the peaceful protesting has happened so many times before. Right. It right. happened earlier with Philando Castile. It happened earlier with yeah. a bunch of situations, right? I can't even name it. And everybody was up in arms. We went to these protests. I went to these protests very peacefully. One month later, it all died. Yeah. This is the longest that it's lasted, mm -hmm. right? And right. it's still going on strong still going right on. now. And even when you go on social media, it's a good sign. I know some people like are tired of it or whatever. But when you go on social media and you still see these posts and people kind of still hammering about all these things, like the Breonna Taylor stuff and, and the Elijah McClain. Is that his last name? Yes. Yeah, and you see it and it's like, it's to me, I'm like, okay, good. People are still talking about this because nothing has happened yet. Yeah. And this, like the fact that the Breonna Taylor one is so crazy because that's, it's insane. It's, Cause when you, when you read it on just factually, like just yeah. what happened, you're like, no fucking way this happened. Yeah. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. They, they went into this girl's house. They shot her while she was sleeping or something like that, right? So it was – so they didn't have a warrant for an arrest, yeah. right? They were cops that weren't dressed as fucking cops. Yeah. They broke the into the home, started opening fire. So when you break into my home, you're opening fire. I have a gun in my house. What are you going to do? Right. Yeah, you're going to shoot the fuck back, of course. right? Yeah. And so they straight up murdered this girl in her fucking sleep in her bed. And these cops just – Scratch free. They're not fucking arrested. Yeah, right. It's like, how is that? Oh, okay. and they said That's the suspect bullshit. that they were trying to find was yeah. already in custody. Exactly. Is what the fuck is yeah, that, going that's on? That's one of those things. Those instant like arrests, like that. that, that the but the there's a, the police haven't been held accountable for a long exactly. Fucking that's time, the problem, dude. They've been they've been out of hand for a long fucking time. So it is good. Like the protests are great. I think the I honestly wasn't looting is obviously not the right way to go about mm -hmm. it but i wasn't mad at it i understood like yeah. you're, i'm mad people are dude. pissed no dude. one's listening people are i'm mad. gonna fucking throw a rock through this goddamn window you yeah. know it's yeah. not the right thing to do but i've been mad before and punched a wall yeah that's not the right thing to do either yeah. but i done that and yeah. i get it it's mm -hmm. stupid but like i did it i hit it and i don't keep fucking hitting the wall and try to break it down but and, and that's, that's the thing it's like thing. when you when, you, when you're on the outside looking in at another population that's going through something like this it's like you have to come with it you have to come to the table with some empathy you have to understand that like yeah, obviously there's not the right way to do it, but can you blame? The, like, can you understand? No. Can you yeah. understand where yeah. they're coming from? Can you blame from? It's them? Because the order of of importance sometimes gets messed up, right? And I had a I had a buddy who I was just reading on his Twitter, and he put he put up a a poll, and it was a phrase of like, "Hey, do you believe?" He was like, "Which one's right or wrong?" Right? It's uh, black. He's like, "Hey, this shit sucks. Black lives matter." Black lives matter, but these riots are wrong. Or do you say these riots are wrong or black lives matter? Which one do you choose? And a lot of people chose the first, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the wrong answer, right? It should be, 
these riots are wrong, but Black Lives Matter. Because it, co- it shows the order of importance of what you're focused on. Yeah. You're focused on this this destruction that happened in this area, yeah. right? Versus what the movement is actually about. Exactly. And so it's just it's just kind of fucked up, right? Because we have conversations about Antifa. We have like these random yeah. looters and right. They have nothing to do with BLM, just fucking shit up. Yeah. Right. And a lot of these people are a bunch of couch surfers who haven't even been to a fucking protest to see what's going on. And they mm-hmm. want to weigh in on an opinion about it. Yeah. Unless you've been there, you don't know what's up. Or they're not yeah. spending time in these communities. Yeah, you're you know not I mean? even a part of these communities. Yeah. You've never even... That's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of the opinions that people have had about these situations was everybody's allowed to have an opinion. But it's like, if I ask them sometimes, like, you have a black friend? They're like, oh, yeah, I know black people. No, I, do you have a friend that's close to you that's that's a black American, like yeah. a black person? Most likely it's no, right? It's yeah. like, you know of black people. You, mm-hmm. may, you might have a black acquaintance. Yeah. But you're not really close to that culture, right? Mm-hmm. And you would do the same thing for anybody of Asian culture too. It's like, you wouldn't make an Asian joke about shit if you didn't know an Asian person, yeah. but you don't understand the nuance behind it. Right. But sometimes like people get that freebie with black culture just because it's been around in America for a long time. Because I know of a black person. It doesn't mean you understand black culture. and doesn't exactly. mean you understand what they go through. Right. Mm-hmm. So sometimes like in, these, in, in this platform, people go, what do you think about it, David? I'm like, what I say about it only matters, I think about 10, 10 maybe 5% yeah. because I'm not a part of that community. Right. Yeah. But I can speak up about it. But if you want to know about black culture, don't ask a fucking Asian guy that own a black exactly. supply store. Right, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Don't ask me. You're asking the wrong person. And that's your that's the problem. I like you where know? your head's at, but we got to get you to the right sources. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm not a black guy, dude. Close, Go ask a black guy. Really, you know? <laughs> and he goes, I can't. Why? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Got you, bitch. You know what I mean? I just got your ass. <laughs> Fuck, man. Mm. Yeah, straight you up. You were telling me the other guy, Danny, Danny Mathis, Mathis? Was it? Was oh, it? yeah, the guy from that 70s show. Not Kelso. What's his name on the show? Uh, hi. 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 And it's so funny. He looks like a rapist. Yeah, he does. No, <laughs> on the show, like he creep. gives like those creepy vibes too. Yeah, and he's just like, he always plays like the cool guy. I remember my sister, she met him at like, a, they did like a live taping or something. And she was like, everybody was so nice, except for Danny Masterson. He was a total fucking douchebag. Really? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, fuck that guy. And then, you know, I, I've, I've heard others. I don't know. If, well, the fact that he came out and said, uh, well, they found out that he was being charged for, like, raping three different women. It's like, I wasn't really surprised when I saw that. I don't know. But that's just me. That's just the off, just off vibes. I don't know anything that's about the guy. That's such a weird... I, I, I fail to understand why... There has to be some kind of weird connection with some of these Hollywood people. It's it's a power thing for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Like to sexually assault somebody is definitely a power high. Like oh, they, yeah. they want to take something from these women yeah. that they wouldn't normally get if it wasn't by force. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's it's so fucked up. I can't wrap my fucking head around it. Well, it's just right. like what's the appeal? <laughs> yeah, what's the fucking yeah. appeal? Explain yeah. that to me. Like you ever hang out with somebody that doesn't want to be around you? It's yeah. the worst feeling it's ever. Like, oh, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine forcing yourself on that person. It's like, oh, dude, like obviously it's, you know, don't compare it to that. But it's just like <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. I don't know why, you know, I don't know. That, I mean, that I don't think me. we'll understand it. Yeah, like, it's, it, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a, you're fucked up in the head, dude. Like you want yeah. that power? Like uh, the fuck? Somebody? Yeah, man. Like, I don't know, dude. And it's, they don't like you while you're having, like that's. I mean, I've heard of a lot of just God um, damn, because I don't, I don't know of these people, and I, I don't know what it is about. I mean, obviously, if you're a victim of this stuff, it's hard to kind of say the name of the person who affected you that way. But I've, I've even heard this story from a person who, um, so as an actor, she was nothing happened, right? But because nothing happened, like her whole career, she felt like her whole career started to derail. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of casting calls wouldn't come in anymore. Um, certain um, certain casting people uh, unfollowed her on Instagram. Wow, Damn. you know, and she, because all of that stuff that she received was connected through um, this this person, and so because that person was a source for everything, like she got dropped by her management. And obviously, there's no like proof of this. Yeah, but because of the relationship that she had with this person, um, it's pretty clear and pretty evident, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're not gonna hook up. We're not. There's nothing romantic happening between us. So uh, all of a sudden, my manager drops me. Wow. All of a sudden, my, you know, all of a sudden, I'm not getting any casting calls Ugh, anymore. Damn, and bullshit. things get a little awkward, right? And so she has to pick up from these pieces. There isn't any evidence or anything else like that. And it's hard, you know. Yeah. And, and I always tell people to, like, number one, <clears throat> if somebody's approaching you, especially in this industry, if any of you out there get in this industry, right, people promise you the world and everything in it. Yeah. 
you never in life, specifically in this fucking industry, nothing comes without a price, right? It's sad. That's just how it is. That's just the reality. If you see it, yeah. somebody, whether you're a guy or girl, actor, whatever, right? And somebody comes and is like, yo, I want to put you in all this other shit, blah, 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 blah. Entertain it, but understand that people always expect something in return. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying, I'm not just talking about sexually. I'm talking about something else, yeah. right? And if you're going into these like situations thinking that somebody doesn't want something from you, you are at a huge disadvantage. Right. I expect somebody when they say, hey, man, I'm going to make you like blah, 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 the biggest star. Cool. Thank you very much. I'm glad you believe in me. I wonder what this person wants and I'll figure that out. Yeah. Right. Keep, your, keep your wits about you because this world is so fucked up, right? And that's the sad thing about it. A lot of the times too, when you guys come into the city and I, I think I get really annoyed when people say like, oh, people in LA, they're so fucking whack, blah, 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 blah. Like all they care is about getting something from you. And I look at that person and say, why did you move to LA? And he was like, because I wanted to make connections. And I'm like, so you're that person too? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're So you're the difference between you and that other person that you don't like is that they're self-aware that they came here to take something. Yeah. You're not. Right. Right? So you're actually not playing the game that you came here for. Yeah. So you're fucking up. Right? Yeah. yeah, you're losing. Already poo pooing it, you know. Yeah, sitting on your high horse. While exactly. You're doing the it's like you're you're thing. the exact same person. Yeah. You came into the city to develop these connections, and then because it's not going your way, you're like, I fucking hate people I hate in those LA. People. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like you are those people. The reason why you went to that brunch was so you can get connected with these other human beings, and whatever project didn't work out. Now you're like, fuck this person. They're not hitting me up. But what was the reason why you connected with that person in the first place? Right. Exactly. exactly. It was because you wanted either a role or you wanted something else from it. Now, next time that you go in these situations, just be a little smarter and expect something better. Yeah. It's like, cool. You want to give me this role? Cool. Let's chat up. Don't talk to them over the phone. You know, ha have these like conversations that are a little more cut off and a little more succinct. Be smart about your shit. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying stuff that's right or wrong. I'm saying that this world is fucked up. This yeah. industry is fucked up. So be better, be smarter, and fuck those people over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just yeah, have the yeah. understanding because it probably changes everything for you. especially mm -hmm. when you Just be real about door. it. Yeah. You know? Don't this, lie to yourself and act By the way, the situation I'm talking about too, like similar situations have happened to both male and female. And in my situation, from when I hear these stories, it's actually happened to more male actors than it has to my female actors. Really? Crazy. Crazy, huh? You yeah. would never think that shit. But it's happened to a lot of my male actor friends where they, they get hit on by an exec and they kind of turn turn it away and then opportunities disappear for like a year and they have to, they have to climb their way back up. That's wow. so crazy. That's such a crazy... That's so fucked. That's dude. so nuts, man. It's wow. insane. That's why, that's why, why do you think a lot of these actors and creatives, they start going into YouTube, yeah. right? They start going into these platforms where you're allowed to create for yourself. See, the reason why YouTube as a platform worked really well for people like me who are creators is because there was no more red tape. You can't tell me I can't create something because you have an avenue for it to be released somewhere. I could release it tomorrow on YouTube and develop my own fan base. Yeah, you're yeah. your own entity, your own thing. Exactly. Whether yeah. somebody likes it or not, it's up to the crowd. It's up to the viewers to decide whether I choose to, whether I become famous or recognized for my work yeah. rather than somebody pushing me. Because that even happens with record sales, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you guys wonder when you guys hear a record sale, it's like, yo, this song's hot trash. This person's not that great. Why is it so popular? Well, it's because people pull strings in the background. They pay these radios. Like, like yo, Put this track on. Put this track on. They had right. these connects to make these artists blow up. Politicking. Everything is based on politics. Oh, yeah. YouTube, not so much, right? A little bit. Yeah. You know, because now like YouTubers will connect with each other. It's like, yo, let's create this fake story where I sat on this grape and it went up my ass and it came out my mouth. <laughs> All right. And, like, then we'll call oh, it, and we'll call it the the great grape of Italy. That's the, <laughs> that'll be the title. Uh, hell, that'll yeah. be the title of this fucking video, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's. That's what this whole YouTube space is, man. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird. There was a point in YouTube where people were doing fake drama. There was a guy that did a, uh, a fake video about, I think, like his girlfriend killing herself or some shit. <laughs> like, Whoa. What the fuck? There's some Can't come back from that, though, huh? There's some weird fucking shit. Dude, right now, a lot of YouTubers are getting outed out, and at, their people are trying to, quote, unquote, cancel them because of the past behaviors. Uh, there's a girl named... Um, I think her situation is a little weird. A lot of people are actually defending her, but her name is Jenna Marbles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's one of those original creators. If you guys see these videos online, where, she was that colored hair, that white chick, right? Yeah, she yeah. was a, a go-go dancer before. A really goofy, goofy girl. She was a go-go dancer. Yeah. She was a go-go dancer before. Oh, and, oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! And so wow. she used to do these videos where it was like what guys thinks thinks versus girl thinks, right? So she was like an innovator of that format. And of she comedy. did all the funny voices. She dressed yeah. up mm -hmm. as a dude. And so like she that. was an innovator of that shit. Obviously, mm. a lot of people bit that. They took it to their own, and you know, she black was, people do this. White people do this. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So she was one of those people. And till this day, I think she gets like three to four million views per video. And it's just her just petting her dog. 
You know, that's how strong her fandom is. That's crazy. Like, I just went back to a few of her videos, and it was her just like, this is my dog. He, 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 he. I gave him a new treat. Let's see how he likes it. (laughs) 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 And then I saw the views. Four million views. Wow. Then I went into my shower with my clothes on, and I turned it on all the way hot, and I cried. (laughs) That's why you got the dog, though, right? That's right. So I could cry with the dog. (laughs) And by the way, I showered with my eyes open with shampoo streaming in it. Like this. (laughs) And that just shit, pouring shampoo on top. Just pouring head. shampoo on top, just crying. But she put out a video doing an apology video because I guess back in the day she did this video where it looked like she was doing blackface. And I guess like when fans were explaining, it wasn't really blackface. It was it was something else, but a lot of people flamed her for it. It was brown face. But something like that. Maybe gook face. Yeah, gook face. Yeah. Now that's cool. No one's done that <laughs> yet. That's yeah. chill, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I want somebody to do that. That shit would be crazy. Just tape your eyes back and then beat your kids for not, for not succeeding. <laughs> And anything in life. Oh, yeah. Gook face. I think Patrick's going to be the first one to do gook face. He's so? going to bring it back. Wow. He's going to bring it back. <laughs> Check his Instagram feed. It's going to come out next week. Guys. Yeah, she did like a 40-minute apology video. Starts crying. And she's like, I'm going to quit YouTube from here on out. Because she couldn't take the pressure of the negative pressure. So it's like, you know, these YouTubers are getting canceled. Now, there's another dude named Shane Dawson. I guess he did blackface uh, a while ago. Why, are, why is <laughs> <laughs> doing blackface. Dude. I, I, don't yeah, I don't know why. It's like clearly this is a like a bad yeah. area. You know, this is if, a landmine. We'll, we'll just do this. If if you're if you're a white person or you know, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll start there. We'll start there. If you're a yeah, white let's person, not, let's not do that. Let's just, not just, do it. Let's just, just, avoid don't, it. just let's just don't. not buy the makeup and let's just not put it on and your even face. Even if it's for a bit, good. yeah, like you know, yeah, black is like And if you're a Shane Dawson fan, you can go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I, but this is just what I read. In you know, I'm glancing at this. This is I'm I'm not a news source, but people are asking for him to be canceled. I saw it multiple times on Twitter because of a video where he did blackface. And they're also saying that he's also a pedophile, mm. like this whole pedophilia thing going on, which I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And I don't have what anything. The fuck, you, bro? And you know what I heard? I heard that fool hates my guts. <laughs> Does he? Shane Dawson. Oh, celebrity boxing match. Shane Why? Dawson. Wait, what does Shane Dawson do? What's, I, uh, I hear the name. He's he he does like these really, really fantastic, like grade A YouTube documentaries. Uh are you being sarcastic? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> like he interviews some high profile people like Jake Paul and he does like a, an hour long documentary. Wow. And I got to tell you, man, you find out great things. Wow. And he is amazing. Yeah. But he used to do, he used to do comedy videos and stuff like that. I think, I think he is. Did you think he was funny though? Did you think Shane Dawson was Can funny? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I have never laughed so hard in my life. Are you being sarcastic again? <laughs> Let me tell you something. He, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Might not have much on him. Wow. That he's that funny. Damn, dude. I gotta check this dude out. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. guy. Sean Dawson. Sean Dawson. Yeah. Sean Donaldson. Sean Donaldson. Dude, Sean, Sean, dude, Sean, dude, Sean Damien is Sean. one of my fa- <laughs> is one of my favorite. Okay, this is what it is. <laughs> so I I did this, I did this video back in the day talking Don't about explaining how I got into YouTube back in the day, right? So I got into YouTube. Well, first of all, I knew about YouTube because I used to watch Korean dramas on that shit and then learn how to like fix my car, <laughs> right? I didn't know that you could upload content and make comedy. I didn't know I could be a content creator for YouTube. Right. So when I found that out, I found out through this uh, this uh, sociology class. It was a sociology. It was a class in new media. Mm-hmm. And a, a, the example that the professor put up was a video of Sean, Sean. Damien. So <laughs> Nimble doubles. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> I was like, Sean, Sean Damien, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so when he put this video Shameless. up, I said, I was like, wow, this guy's a comic and he's really popular on YouTube. I was like, whoa, this guy fucking sucks. <laughs> and so I started my own channel, right? And I went off. And that was the joke that I told. Right, and so yeah. he heard about this and he was like, kind of like, yo, fuck David So. Like, why is he talking shit about me? And the reason why I said that, I was using this story. Number one, I was telling a joke. Yeah. Number two, I used an example of how when I was younger, in order for me as a comic, I would like try to shit on other people's work yeah. just to hide my own insecurities. Uh-huh. That was the purpose of the story. Yeah. Right. It wasn't to say I hated his shit, yeah. but I think he only heard that part and he was like, fuck this guy. Yeah, 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 and so yeah. I was like, yo, bro, I didn't say your shit was trashy. I, I, I do, but yeah. that wasn't the point of the story. Yeah, I would have yeah, loved yeah. to have seen like a video of him watching that clip though. Like, he was, <laughs> you know, he just Who the fuck there, does like, this guy David think he so, is? He's like, all right, David's so cool, new guy, content creator. Sean Damien sucks. He's like, 
up, David. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> he turned off the video after that. No, yeah. he didn't. He didn't watch the rest he of it. That's on him, man. He probably didn't like me because I wasn't the under the age of eighteen. So, so what? <laughs> so what? So what are the <laughs> allegations on the pedophile stuff? Now so, I'm interested. Now I'm hooked. Well, somebody, everybody's been sending me this Damn, link right now. Like pedophiles? a bunch of people are DMing it to me. Like a part of me doesn't even want to read it. Like, yeah. uh, but I. All right. Let me read it. Let me let me see. Let, let me see. Let let's let's get it. Because dude, you're doing blackface. You're getting accused of being a pedophile. You know. Yeah, and know. at the end of the day, the reason why I don't want to, I'm not gonna Fuck. put my two cents in. Yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But but do it anyway though. But people are because because he hates you because he didn't watch the rest of your. Oh. Hey man, let me tell you, Shane. Unless you're a, a, a you're into young children, I don't hate you. Mm -hmm. I can dislike your content. Like that's okay. There's a lot of people. It's fine. My personal friends. Hate my comedy. Yeah. Right? We're not friends anymore. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> and I don't talk to them ever. Dude, again. my friends back at home, they don't listen to my podcast. They don't, they don't listen yeah. to any of my shit, right? Yeah. They just know that I'm doing my thing and they move on. Some people don't even find me funny. They yeah. actually find me highly offensive. Yeah. But we're still friends. <laughs> but it's all yeah. good. We're still yeah, good. It's fine. Especially you love because they the hate people you love. They hate it because I tell stories about them <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> nice. They're like, why the fuck did you tell the story about the innocent eight? <laughs> Blow my shit up, dog. No, I didn't say your fucking name. Right. Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got you. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, we, we know. We know. We know. Jenny, we know about you, bitch. No, one, of, <laughs> one of my friends, that's not her name, but one of my friends uh, cracked me up because I told the story because the story of the innocent eight. And I was saying like in high school how uh, – <laughs> These girls are such stupid asses. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking, they fucking created this group. It was like an AIM group, right? And it oh, was like AIM, they were dude. called the Innocent Eight. So oh, every no. every single one of them had their innocent tag, whatever. Innocent Angela, innocent um, Rebecca. People or some love shit. little groups like that, huh? They love they that love shit. like little clicks. So a bunch of the boys started making fun of them, and they're like, "All right, then we're the Evolution Seven. <laughs> you know, we started, seven. We started Evolution fucking around seven. with them, Hell but yeah. the Innocent Eight. They they split into like the angry fours because what, what happens? happens? So it's, amongst each other or against the evolution seven? No, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, power that's, that's a steel great cage movie. match. I'd want to watch. <laughs> when the girls split, the eight split into four and four. Angry fours, and it all started from a single argument about. Oh. So the, some of the girls of the innocent eight, four of them went to the mall. Without the other innocent oh, eight. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. They went to Claire's, had a yeah. fucking blast on uh -huh. the rest of the Cardinal they, Sin. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like murder. That's like murder. Yeah. Cardinal Sin. That's they, they got the ears, sacrilege, ears pierced without them. They, oh, got their, yeah, yeah, they got yeah. their shit pierced or whatever, and they came back and they're like, yo, stop. So why don't you fucking, yeah. how come the other, yeah. I thought we were the innocent eight and you fucking divided it by two, math. And then they were <laughs> like, what fucking happened? Why didn't you do that? They're like, and shit started to come out. They're yeah. like, well, why are you being so sensitive, bitch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I'm so, I'm, but I like this person more and then we're all good. And then all their shit started coming out. Wow. Then the innocent eight broke up. Oh, shit. Then one of the innocent eight, dog, this shit was the dopest fight I've ever seen. Oh, no, they fought. Like a real fight. Fist fight. So, Ooh, after school, school, two of the girls Hell yeah. got into a fist fight. Right, one of these girls, by the way, looks like a bulldog. She <laughs> 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 doesn't listen to this podcast, so she's uh, an amazing <laughs> fighter. <laughs> dog, this bitch was so fucking strong. She was like four foot eleven, and she could beat the shit out of anybody. Damn, right? like she likes that Mike Tyson. Yeah. Bottom fucking. She was all strong quads, as fucking shit. Yo, I was like two hundred and thirty pounds in high school, and this bitch used to give me piggyback rides. Damn, yeah, she God, was strong. Damn. Fuck, right? Low so center of gravity. Low center. Let me tell you something else. So the Jesus. one of the girls never got into a fight in high school at all. She's not violent at all. Yeah. But I think she got so fed up with with the other innocent four shit yeah. that after school they started throwing down. Lo Damn. and behold, what happened after this? The the innocent four actually left to a different high school. Oh, oh shit! It's like we can't take this anymore. We're gone. Wow. This is serious. All four of them. All four of them moved to a different high school. It's so, like a Netflix show, dude. Yeah. yeah. So what in this high school? I'm in, I'm in dude. In that fight, I'm the in. craziest thing: the, the bulldog. <laughs> The bulldog fucking started a town stopping the shit out of one of the girl's head on the wow. floor. I've never seen. Have you ever seen somebody try to take out a fucking napkin fire on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> she started stomping the shit out of this girl's face. Just bow, 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 bow. Wow. Oh, I was shit. shocked. And that is the story of the innocent eight. And I got a DM saying, why did you tell that story? <laughs> I was like, they don't know that it's you. Yeah, oh, dude. Damn. So, what did, so that was the end of it. That was obviously. So, well, she got to fuck up a relationship. So she was on the. <laughs> Um, hey, don't stop it. Somebody else, yeah. up a friendship, for yeah. <laughs> and all of us was thunderclapping while she was doing it. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, so uh, girls on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> but she's like, she's like, it's kind of tight. Yeah, it's it's the, kinda beat is, the beat is slap. Yeah. The beat is yeah, slapping right now. She's like dying. Welcome nice. to floor and high, baby. <laughs> Woo! But, um, after, what I happened think, to the Evolution Seven though? So the Evolution Seven they broke up. No, we're still together. Oh yeah, still there. Still together. Well, they well some of them they kind of went about their own ways because you know everybody nothing no drama though so do you guys have meetings mm -hmm. still or like you guys yeah we, we actually our high school friends still meet up every every thanksgiving every every christmas with the yeah. innocent eight as well no the innocent eight split up and yeah. the and the funny thing is the innocent four that we kept in our high school that didn't move away yeah that group split so now i'm thinking i sided with the evil group oh because yeah. the other innocent four apparently i hear are still together oh wow. they were the righteous ones they, they were i the think real ones. they were they were the ones that got their face stomped in Damn. It brought them closer together as, as a team, especially when the girl's face looked like a Picasso painting. <laughs> Damn! So like we got it. Did we the other ones help when that one girl was getting stomped out? Did the other innocent three help? Them? I think uh, nah, he was so it was. Four of them so what? I, so one of the girls. <laughs> it was supposed four. to be a one-on-one -on -one fight, and it was right next to the school office too, out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one fight, but the bulldog was like, Hurr. and <laughs> she was like, "I got to get my licks in," and she went, "Bow, bow." Oh, bow. she led with the. How do you lead with the oh, stomps? Well, the, well, the other girl already took you the other girl. Down, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. jump back up of her head. Fucking, yeah, just step on her. So she head. already took the other girl down, and by that point, that one girl was on the floor, and Bulldog came in and started stomping her face. Oh in. my! I'm goodness. all about honorable one on ones, but if you're a four eleven girl and you can give a dude that's two hundred thirty pounds a piggyback ride, you jump that. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's the like, juggernaut. I'm all about bro. one on ones, but no, if she's that's the, too much power, she's that's the juggernaut, and especially what the average, juggernaut. average what like. 16 year old girl we really had about some, like 110 pounds yeah it's gonna take 100 all, pounds. all the innocent four yo we had some one. they're not really? doing any strength training they're, they're not strong enough to handle that no 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 you oh, jump no. she was a vietnamese refugee so you know oh she, shit she's she from the stick she's seen it. yeah she she's was been straight through from, it she's about, she's she's been she's through about through that action boss. action boss <laughs> she looked at me she was like tunnels. hey you know what you're the same size as my fucking uh was a cow at home hey that's one of the best like most subtle vietnamese accents i've ever i grew up with the vietnamese a whole time man yeah that's pretty good because when people do usually do the vietnamese accent they go way over the top yeah they do you know gotta do simbo very yeah. down here <laughs> simbo <laughs> i do it down here man you know i used to fucking because sacramento has a bunch of vietnamese people a lot of my friends are vietnamese mm. uh, i i didn't even know i could do the accent just because i heard it so often it's like the most easiest thing ever but one of the funniest things i ever saw there's just a, a market out in sacramento that's a vietnamese market when you don't know a language <laughs> and you try to curse in it, you have to understand when you use the word fuck properly, right? Mm -hmm. So I was at this market and I was supposed to go pick up some groceries for my mom. And this dude was coming out of a parking lot, which is a large black man. And as he was coming out, this Vietnamese dude didn't see and he just started backing out and almost hit his car. <gasps> so the dude comes out, big old black dude comes out and he goes, and I shit you not, I'm not making this shit up. He goes, hey bro, what the fuck? Watch where the fuck you're going. This dude, like this five foot two Vietnamese man comes out, right? He goes, Hey, motherfucker, you shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he just, yeah. and I was like, I've never heard somebody string those curse words together before. I like that. Mother that's, shit, bitch. And he's good. like, oh shit, I'm Mother sorry, dude. Mother fuck shit. He goes, you want me to fuck you now, huh? <laughs> you like, fuck now, huh? And this dude was like, what? He's like, no. <laughs> he goes, what? He goes, yeah, I'm fucking you now, huh? <laughs> yeah, you want to fuck now? <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah. Bro. You don't know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. He won that battle. The guy went right back into he was his like, car. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. He goes, I'm not trying out. to fuck. Yeah, you want to you want this fucking dick. <laughs> he like, yeah, you want the missionary style. And he's like, <laughs> cowgirl. Cowgirl. <laughs> Reverse, maybe. <laughs> no, you want the dirty Sanchez? Dude. <laughs> yeah, you want this right now, huh? <laughs> I spread the butt cheeks, smell your essence, and throw you some. <laughs> He's like, Bernie Sanchez, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, I, I'm a freak asshole. <laughs> yeah. You Dude, don't know so me. in that context, Psych you knew exactly what he was saying. <laughs> no, yeah, you knew exactly Bro, what he was psychological saying. warfare is so underrated. Like, yeah. if you're about to get down, you're like, I got a ping thong on, motherfucker. And he's like, what? And then you land that right hand. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, dude. Like, you got, dude. Right I'll hand. suck your motherfucking neck, man. You Boom. see all those videos of those dudes, like, they go to, like, the hood or whatever, and they, they, uh, they try to pick fights with fools, and they just get naked. Those guys, bro, they're not playing that shit. They're out, dude. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. They're not playing that, dude. Like, what's up? <laughs> they, they're in like a thong. <laughs> what well, videos are you watching on the internet, dude? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, Is, excuse me? <laughs> told you, this fool never works. Yeah. I don't work, dude. You absolutely don't work. So you, I, I do the thing that you do now, where I just stay up really late, and I just like- I sleep now, though. That. I, I know. sleep a lot. We switched kind of roles a little bit. How late are you staying up to? 
Last night I went to bed around like 1.30. Working on a conspiracy or what were we No, I, you know what I was watching? I was just, usually it's, I'm like watching like fights. That's what, that's what I usually watch like late at night. But sometimes I. I are you going get, to get into a fight this year or not get into a fight? Are you going to no. book a fight this year? No, dude. I want you to fight so bad. No. I just want one. You quit no. fighting when I met you. I want you to fight one time while, yeah, I, hey. while we're friends. Hey, no. Unless you want to see me lose. I want yes. you to fight. Dude, Nick is fucking good, dude. That's, That's what I'm saying. It's really good. No, no, so, like, what's up with you guys? Like, what are you guys up to th- these days during nah, COVID? Nah, nah, dude, <laughs> well, no. Hold on a second. Did you deflect? <laughs> let, no. let, let's, let's not talk about this, you know? That was Why the not? worst transition ever. How yeah, come you don't want to do one more fight? Because I just I just don't have it in me, dude. Oh, please, dude. Why I you? don't. You're let me piece, tell you something. Dude. Honestly, you would fuck somebody up for sure. When we when we spar, right, he goes, hey, yeah, I just don't. Every time we, we, we're supposed to train, he goes, we're probably going to spar today. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker wants to fight. <laughs> I'm like, he wants to fight somebody. The next thing you know, my fucking leg is welted up. My right... You can't beat up your pupil. I don't know. I, bro, I, don't, I don't know more than you teach me. I, I, don't, I don't beat you up, bro. You're you're the one that punches me in the face multiple times and you hit hard. I, I do not punch him in the face. This guy just beats me up and he just goes, good session, right? Bro, <laughs> like, you're you're painting a wrong picture, dude. This is what's wrong with out. The, this <laughs> session, <laughs> right, bro? This is what's wrong with media, dude. This is what it is right here. No, no. You give a guy like this a platform and he lies to your faces. Wow. That's Face what it up. is, dude. I'm taking a stand. I want you to just do one more amateur fight. No, dude. Just one. No fucking way. You would way. do good. You would do really he would good. Do re- I think he's probably better now than he was when he was fighting before. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I think so too. But training. still, no. Yeah, of course. I'm, not, I'm just, you gotta, you gotta have some hate in your heart all the time. I don't really well, know. there's a fighter I know that wants to fight you right now. And he said, what? your mom is a not nice person. Wow. What? Ah, dude. He said that your mom I'm gave fired up, dude, to you. Damn, <laughs> what, bro? Did she say he didn't mention anything about the C-section? No, he didn't say anything about that. But it's he, on. Book he, it, dude. Yeah. Book it. Book, Book it. it. Is he in the Evolution Seven? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, son? And he's also a part of the Evolution Seven. Oh, dude, dude. that's pretty that's cool. Like man. The final boss. Let's set bro. it up. Let's set it up. Let's fight set the it final up. boss. Yeah, yeah, no, what would it take for seven. you to get into one more fight? Just <sighs> one oh, more. Dude. One more fight. Uh, he has a daughter now. It's different. He actually has responsibilities. Yeah. You, on the other hand, are a piece of shit. I am. Piece of shit. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So if I have a kid, yeah. I'll be all good. Yeah, but you don't have a kid. I have a kid, shit, dude. I, it's gonna be like. At Sometimes least nine I kind of do want to. I, I think about it. I'm like, ah, it'd be nice. But then it's like a lot of training and shit and fucking. Yeah, yeah. I'm just being lazy. Here's you know? the thing about fighting. But it's like it's not something you just hop in and hop out. You do have to be all in. You got to be all in, and you got to be like, if you're gonna fight, I feel like you have to be training like year round and. I'm not really doing Eat that. Eat right, so. running. Yeah, dude, I'm just but, not But really. you could, I mean, if but you it's want also, it, it's, it, well, it just depends on your itch. Do you feel like you want to fight? No, I don't have an itch at all. I have no itch. Sparring? Like, or- I want to train, and I want to train with, like, my buddies, and sometimes I need that. But, like, to go out there and compete, I'm not really, like, it kind of, like that. It doesn't really do anything for me, you know? Just one. No. <laughs> just one. I'll give you a $100. <laughs> A solid hundred. I'll pitch in twenty bucks. I could really a hundred and twenty dollars. All right. So so here's the thing. Okay. So we do one twenty. That's perfect because then I'll owe about like two hundred dollars more on my medicals and everything else after that. Okay. How about this? If I gave you a thousand dollars, would you do an amateur fight? No, I wouldn't do it for thousand. Two thousand. No. Oh, two two G's. Uh, I will give you two. Th- I have to talk about it with my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say this: I wouldn't. I wouldn't take money from you. That's it. It's not coming from me. It's coming from the Evolution Seven. <laughs> Evolution Seven, it's, baby. It's your fundraiser that you guys have. That's right. Two thousand dollars and a copy of Super Smash Bros. Ooh. Oh shit! That's a lifetime of joy. Right DLC there. included or DLC what? DLC included. Are you going to take I'm it or not? It. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not down to fight, dude. Ten thousand dollars wow wow ten thousand dollars from where don't worry about it <laughs> these I lips don't do tell and they do work i'm not i wouldn't put you through that i wouldn't want you to do that so no. i would fight for 10 g's for sure someone was like i'll give you ten thousand dollars that's yeah, what i'm yeah. saying you wouldn't fight for ten i would fight for 10 g's wow five I, I, I just don't want ten <laughs> i don't want ten thousand <laughs> <for you. laughs> if, <you, laughs> if, if you were to be like <laughs> i started hey, sweating when he said yes i was like oh shit five thousand <laughs> if you were to give me money, I wouldn't take it from you. That's how I feel about that. Wow. So why don't you go fuck yourself? Oh my god, man! I just oh. to do it once. <laughs> bang, 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 well, Alex bang. said he wants to fight, but this will never trace. <laughs> <laughs> he's on Twitch right now. That dude, he's he's all about. Alex like, cracks me the fuck up, dude. This yeah. fool always does this shit where he goes, "Hey, dog, you don't even know. I'm about to be on this meal prep as he's eating carne asada fries in front of me." 
like, every time he says he's about to lose weight, he's eating the most unhealthy food and shoving it down his throat like that seagull that ate that rat. Like that's, <laughs> that's fucking. He's always like lifting his head yeah. up to get the food down. Because he said he wants to get into a fight. Is he going to yeah. fight again? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's I, hard I right just, now, Corona and all yeah, this. Yeah, it's just but. it's just hard, but it's also like priorities change, you know. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like I'm I'm like well, I mean this when I say like when you're fighting, it's a really good idea to have your soul focus on just fighting. Yeah, it's true. As soon as you have your mind on anything else, it's it, it's real, real. Yeah, because you can get tough. really hurt. I mean, it is. Yeah, it man. Is. It's like it's it's not. A, it's you can't play this shit. It's what about something- an what about one of those? What do you call that? The what do you call it? The PKB kickboxing shit. What's that? Point kickboxing. Yeah, point kickboxing. What yeah, about that? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Because it's like, what's the point? Because yeah, you already went there. You're going backwards. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. You know. But I think like maybe down the line, but probably not. Oh, look at that! Probably I just not. wanted to hear. I know he has a spark That's inside amazing. him. Dude. Nah, 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 nah. He feels it. He feels it. Hey, hey, you feel it? Hey, you feel it? Hey, you feel it? I know you do, man. I don't feeling it. I feel fine. You I don't know what you're talking about. I feel fine. A hundred percent, you do. No, you feel it, like three percent, maybe. I seen the anger in your heart. Some, uh, the, when I, yeah, you beat I, the fuck I, out of that guy for knocking your contacts out, I saw the anger in his heart <gasps> when I first one of the first times I tried. You told the it. story before, and it's like it doesn't make me happy at all because I don't remember the story at all. So I feel like I see you're it. full of shit. When this fool spars, switch, when this fool sparks, uh, uh, spars Ricky, it's it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, the anger in his but heart comes out. We have we have that relationship though. Like we have. I was like, are you friends? I think I asked, like, do you we, like each other? We beat the fuck out of each other, you know? That's I'm just, just how like, it is. I'm like, oh, look at this nice sparring session. Oh, seven head kicks. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Full blast. Well, well you nice. know, I'm trying to kick his body, but he's like that. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are just kicking oh, each other in the face like none other. Yeah. But that's what happens when you, you train with fighters, you know? Like, you train with other fighters. Like, they're not going to... Pro fighters do go kind of hard. Yeah, well, it's like, they have to. They have to. Like, when you train even with some amateur fighters, like... You understand that there's a different speed and a different level to it because their their intent is very different than oh it is our very different because you know, even like, when uh whatever Bill came in I'm like oh he's sparring with a different intent than exactly. me exactly I'm trying to play patty cakes and exactly. he's trying to hit me like, right exactly like, like, well, when we train with Bart we're fucking around we're having fun you know but then when you train with a guy that's like oh I want to fight and my intention is to fight the, the flip is switched already because I could see because no I recorded our little sparring session and I was like oh I have no intent to hit him. Yeah, you know I mean, and he has an intent to hit me. Yeah, he's trying to hit you. You could tell in my body language. I'm just like, you know, just, and he's like, jab, 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 cross, body. And I'm like, hey, what the fuck, man? Like, relax, dude. I was like, yeah. you know, I don't fight, man. Like, what are you doing? Come yeah, on. Not guy. yet. Yeah. No. no, pros go hard. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. But it's also, too, like, you should recognize who you're sparring it's with. It's a mindset thing. It's a mindset. That's all it is. I'm not used to because we don't spar like that. So I don't know what that feels mm-hmm. like. And then when he was hitting me in the face, I was like, he's trying to hit me. <laughs> I was yeah. like, He's really trying to hit me, this guy. This guy. Because yeah, imagine if we guy. train like that. Like, we train like super hard nose, you know? I feel like not a lot of people, like, would want casual to folks would not want to train. 100%. You, know? you got to yeah. like ease people into it. I'm just going to be Mike Perry all day, dude. No sure. corner, no coach, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. I love it, dude. Mike Perry's crazy fucking ass. <laughs> he lost his mind, right? He for reals. I he's been lost. If his he mind, beats right? my, if he beats Mickey Gall, that'll be fucking insane. I, I don't know Mickey Gall personally, but yeah. as a fighter, I'm not a big fan of his. Mm-hmm. But if he loses to Mickey Gall, and Mickey Gall hasn't been doing that great, he lost to Diego Sanchez. Yeah. So it's like if Oof. if fucking Mike Perry, who's ranked 32 with a record of six and six, says he is the best fighter in the world. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. only not only did he lose to Diego Sanchez, <laughs> but he lost to Diego Sanchez. With that one guy in his corner, the fucking Joshua, oh fucking Fabian or whatever, exactly. So, oh, is that the weird? Whatever happened with that? I heard that that dude was saying some weird shit about, like, bro. He was saying bully. What the he fuck was happened? saying all the sometimes weird shit. I see shit and I'm like, I'm not even gonna fucking yeah. jump into this, dude. I, I can't. <laughs> I don't got I time can't have. I don't have time. He got checked by Errol Hawani. Errol Hawani was talking out of all the people boy. to get fucking checked by is Errol yeah. Hawani. Because Errol Hawani has probably more martial arts experience than this fucking guy. You know? hundred... Who was he? Like a guru guy? Or something? Yeah, he's just one of those guys that does like, oh yeah, you can't pass this force field type of shit. You know, wow. like he's kind of like one of those guys. He, you know, but you get a lot of those guys in in the space in the martial arts world because yeah. they think their shit don't stink. Because so. Mike Perry, when, when I saw some of his videos, if you guys don't know who Mike Perry is, Mike Perry is a is a welterweight. Right, yeah. he's a mm-hmm. welterweight fighter. He's ranked number thirty-two. The guy is six and six, which means six losses. Wait, six he's ranked wins. number thirty-two. And he's ranked number thirty-two. I checked it yesterday or some shit. Wow, he's okay. pretty fucking low. Damn, wow. he's down. He the was up there because I remember. Yeah, I remember a couple like 
three years, two, three years ago, he was like, oh, man, Mike Perry, you got to watch out for this He guy. is dangerous. I mean, no, he has, for sure, he has for the sure. potential, but I don't know what the fuck. It's I feel like he's got some tough matchups. He's, he's very erratic matchup. because he's a brawler. So yeah. I think like when he comes in and he's just going at you full force, yeah. it's either he knocks you out or he's he's going to lose to a technician. And that's yeah. what happened with uh, oh, who's the last person he fought. Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal. That was a bad mantle. knockout. Who's Jeff? I don't even know who Jeff Neal is. Jeff Neal's amazing. Dude, yeah. this guy, he... No one really talks about him in the welterweight division, but he's like he's just getting started. That's why. Yeah, but like the wins that he has over people and the way he beat people, it's like, yeah. like they're all like a lot of vicious knockouts. Who else did he knock out besides uh, uh, Mike Perry? I can't remember. There was but one I, other big yeah. name that he knocked out where I was like, oh shit, he knocked him out. He's a technician, so when you have a you know somebody like Jeff Neal go against um a fucking Mike Perry, it's like that's the worst matchup ever. Yeah. And then he got knocked the fuck out. Really, you know, damn bad. And I'm talking about he took a knee from Vincente Luque and he was still awake. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, for real. So, like, he, he was out, right? He was out. I yeah, mean, he was like, yeah. Fuck. It was funny listening to him talk. He goes, "Look, I'm six and six right now." You know, that's how he talks. Yeah. <laughs> he goes yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always like elongates his words. I'm six and six right now. I feel like I'm the best fighter in the world. I got these people in my corner just yelling like throw a elbow, like dog, like they can hear you. I don't yeah. need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're blowing on my spot, dog. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like. He goes, but I'm six and six. I'm ranked whatever. You know, I, I know I got knocked out two times in the first round by people who caught me slipping, but I'm the best fighter in the world. I'm like, you don't know how to make an argument for yourself. Like, I believe right, it. Right. I believe it. But he's also a dude that like, he goes on Instagram live and stuff and people get mad at him because he drops the M-bomb a lot. Oh, yeah. But he's like, I'm 2% African. I did my fucking test. I found out I'm 2% African so I could say this shit. Two percent African, bro. Two percent African. He's a character, bro. But he's 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 fun to watch. His twenty-two year old girlfriend is gonna coach him. What? She's gonna be ringside. And he was saying that she has like wrestling experience and boxing experience. boxing experience. Hell yeah, dude! I love this guy. This is my new favorite <laughs> fighter, bro. This is out of his fucking mind. I, love it. <laughs> I hope he wins, though. I hope he wins just so he could be like, you know, I don't need none of that shit. I'm just gonna fucking. He needs go to make the the Justin Ga- Gaethje uh, adjustments, like that brawler style, but like it gets like controlled yeah. chaos kind of thing. That would work. At for least him. Justin just... Gaethje listens. Yeah, yeah. You know? it, it, yeah, Mike Perry's too wild. It's too much of a fucking. It's, it's weird because we just watched Justin Gaethje. Just beat the shit out of Dude, Tony Ferguson. God that damn, that fight was good. <laughs> so and he insane. gave so much respect to Trevor Whitman, which literally his advice is why he won the fight. Right. Yeah. And then you have Mike Perry on the other side who goes, you don't need a coach. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> my girl, 22, good <laughs> pussy. She got it. That's all I need. That's all I need. Good pussy, my corner. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> In the corner, she goes, baby, show me it. She just shows her pussy real quick. He's like, <laughs> he goes, thanks. <laughs> he, <knocks him> out. <laughs> he just looks at his fist. <laughs> I got to get home to that. <laughs> Let me knock this dude out. It's like, <laughs> I want to hear the, the, the reason why I want to watch this fight so bad is because uh, oh, he's going to be gonna, in his court. You can hear what you're going to hear say. the conversation. Oh, you're right. When yeah. is it? When is it? This Saturday. Tomorrow? Is this Saturday? Saturday. Dan Hooker wow. and Poirier. Dan oh yeah, Hooker, tomorrow. Bro. It's tomorrow. Wow. Ooh. So you're about to hear. It's going to be fucking hilarious. Okay, baby, this is what you're going to do. If you don't win, you're not going to get pussy for two weeks, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I'm going I'm to go out, and I'm I'm fin- I'm finna knock him out. That's a good Mike Perry impression, bro. <laughs> I listen to him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to one of his interviews before I came over here, but he was saying like, oh, yeah, I'm not really training. and I'm just like nomading around, going to different gyms. Hell yeah, people. dude. And I'm like, shit, I hope that works out for you, dog. I, I even watch his sparring footage. I watch his mitt work. I'm waiting for something to be like, this guy's next level shit. But even in his sparring sessions, he's getting pieced up. Is he really? Yeah, he's getting pieced up. And then he starts putting on uh, that aggressive shit. Uh-huh. And that's when he starts winning the sparring sessions. But it's like, well, you just amped it up. And it's not on the same level as what your sparring yeah, partner's you're doing. Yeah, you're too fucking hard. Damn, dude. You know who impressed me was the guy that beat, I think it was on the Gaethje Ferguson card, uh, the guy that beat Jeremy Stevens. I forgot his name. Calvin Cater. Calvin dude. Cater. I, before that fight, because I've been in and out. Like, when I first started watching UFC, I was, like, religious about it. I'd yeah. watch every single card. Now, it's like I don't watch all of them because there's so many. And I we used to watch all the cards together. Like, when we were fighting, every weekend we go to Pat's house. Every, every I never missed shit. But, yeah. like, now I've since fallen out. So, this is my first time seeing that. What was the name again? Dan Engel? Cal- Calvin Cater. Calvin, Calvin Cater. Cater. I was about to say Dan Engelman. That's how good I listen. That's tight. Calvin Cater. Dude. Dan Engelman, brother. <laughs> dude, Seamus Bingle Bomber. <laughs> hates David. Real Bingle. fighter of our generation. Real tour extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, dude, that dude impressed the shit out of me. Because he not only was he technically amazing, like how he knocked out Jeremy Stevens, but he weathered the storm. He yeah. took a lot of punishment and from Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy fucking steve yeah man. no slouch dude that shit that dude is a beast that it was beautiful it was how he did it it was amazing incredible and, dude. and nobody knocks out jeremy stevens like that 
Yeah. Yeah, like, it, well, it's not easy, that's for sure. Dude. Yeah, dude, and the way he did it was like, oh, my and God. And Jeremy Stevens in that first round was giving him trouble, dude. Yeah. yeah. He came out like a fucking pit bull. Dude. Bro, yeah, that dude was a bad him. matchup for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Even even uh, Jeremy Stevens, when he, went against, when he went against Aldo, he was winning. Yeah. Until that amazing body shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. shit was insane. Who's Aldo about? To, Aldo's about to have a good fight. Oh, uh, Peter Pied- Young. Peter Young for the belt. Peter Young. Peter Piatter Young. Is that how you say it? Pied- Who's the favorite in that? Peter. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, by I think he's minus two thirty. Damn, oh, dude, shit. he's about that communist Russian shit, dude. <laughs> I know. Hammer and sickle to the ring, baby. He's going. <laughs> Peter Damn. fucking knocked the shit out of Uriah Faber too. Bro, yeah, the yeah, way he stressful. knocked him out. Oh, it was bad. Just looking at fucking his face was all fucked up, man. Crazy. Why don't you get into one more fight? <laughs> <laughs> one more fight, evolution. Because I think about guys like Peter Yan, and I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. What, you would do good though. I think you're so. a beast. What's up, dude? What's up? You're nah, a fucking I'm beast. Not, I'm not down for that fuck? life. Dude, what, what weight did you fight at? I fought. Uh, it was all over the place because a lot of times in amateur, like people just set up fights where they can make it. So yeah. like I fought one time at 130. I cut 16 pounds in two weeks for that. That was terrible. The worst. What the ever. fuck? That's and insane. then and then I fought. The second one I fought at 135, but the guy that I was that I fought missed weight by 10 pounds, bro. And the guy that was coaching him was one of our old coaches. And we we're like, yo, just hit us up, dog. Like, I made wait for this shit. And this fool came pounds? in 10 pounds overweight. Damn, dude. Yeah. But, you know. And you still took the fight? Well, I was, was like, we might as well. What fight was it? It was uh, my last one. Eric Berganza. Oh, at the, at the Proving Grounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Ooh. the one I lost. Yeah. Um, you lost your last fight. You have to fight like, one I just more held time. Down. He just held him down. I almost finished him in the third in the, round. In the third round, he did almost I almost finish. finished him. He was dropping some nasty uh, uh, hammer fists on top of him. Bro, and... I saw that rage in Nick's eyes. Yeah, I was, I was so pissed. I hate my dad! <laughs> at, 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 <laughs> at the weigh-in, this dude was, like, standing across, and he was just, like, looking at me like this. And in my head, bro, like, in my head, I'm like, dog. We're amateurs. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, yeah. there's no promo here. Like, we're going right. to fight tomorrow. Like, we're going to fight later tonight. Like, why are you acting like a little idiot, you know? I'll run it back. That's the fight I'll come back for. If that fool wants to fight, I'll fight that fool. What was oh. his name? Eric Berganza. I'll Eric fight that Eric Berganza, I hope you listen to I'll, this. I'll take that fight. Let's... That's the fight I'll take. I'll, I'll come back for that. that that's, that's on God, for real. Oh, oh but anyway, no, no, no. damn. I got to look well, him up. No, 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 no. Eric but besides Berganza, that, baby. But he was kind of a nice guy, but whatever. It doesn't matter. What? Um... <laughs> Yo, you know? I just got the best text ever right now. What? My buddy William has just postponed his wedding till next year. Thank you. Hey, William, I didn't want to tell you this, but I wasn't going to show up to your wedding this year. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Come on. All right. And I was going to yeah. pull out last minute just to fuck with you. Don't you love, I was so mad. Don't you love when plans come through like that? I know. you're supposed to go to something and you just don't have to go anymore? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because William, that's what nice the fuck, nice. man? Why would you re- postpone your wedding for this year during quarantine? Right. Like, what's wrong with you? You fuck, I love you. <laughs> I love. He's you. like one of my closest friends. William, we love you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, William. But uh, yeah, back to the story. So at the way, and he was like dogging me from across the fucking, uh, like the whole time. Every time I look over at him, he just like, it's like staring at me, like. Whoo, whoo. And then um, the sec, and then when we faced off, like because we're supposed to take a picture or whatever after the weigh-in, this dude like got it up in my face, and it's actually a really funny picture. Yeah. Where like he's like all the way right here, and I'm like this, and I'm like looking around, and he and you see Savant like. He has like a puzzled look on his face, like, what the fuck is this fool doing? But and then like the whole time he's like dogging me and kind of like being a fucking idiot. And then at first I was scared as fuck. I was like, God damn, this motherfucker is like scary. Like he had, he looked like he was 30 years old and he had like a Playboy bunny tattoo on his chest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was like a thick little stocky guy. And Ooh. I looked like a bag of bones. He had a Playboy bunny tattoo. He had on a his bunch chest? of weird shit on his Good tattoo decisions. on him. <laughs> and he had a mohawk and shit. He looked he he looked no scary regrets. As and I was like, oh shit, this <laughs> no motherfucker. Regrets. Oh, this motherfucker is gonna try to kill me, dog. Yeah. But um, as I remember, I was warming up. I got like really pissed. I was like, this motherfucker thinks he could do all this shit to me and pick on me, whatever. And I was like, I'm gonna fuck this fool up. There it yeah. is. And I was pissed. I was really pissed. And walking out to the fight, like, like f- this this like rage came out of me that I didn't think I would have because I was scared. Like, yeah. I was very scared. That was like the first fight where I felt like nervous, like really yeah. scared. And um. When I walked out, I was just getting madder and madder. And I, when I saw him walk to the cage, I was like, I'm going to fuck this fool up. Like, yeah. I really, and I've never felt that way ever. Usually I'm like, all right, we're going to see what happens. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but this time I was like, I'm going to fuck this dude up. And right when the bell rang, I was like, I'm going to head kick this motherfucker. Like, yeah. So I threw a combination, head kicked him, like, and he blocked it. And then he just double legged me, put me against yeah. the cage. And 
He was a lot stronger than me. A lot stronger than me. He well, held me down. 10 pounds fucking heavier yeah. than yeah, me. Yeah, right. Yeah, but then again, it's like I should I should have been able to stop the takedowns and all that stuff. But he just held me down for like two rounds. Third round, every time the round came out, like uh, the third round, I was like, I'm going to fucking, I have to like knock this bull out. Yeah. And, I, I, and, this, and Savant is in the corner and he's like, you got to knock this motherfucker out. Knock this mother. And I was like, all right, jeez. Like, Stop <laughs> yelling at me, yeah. dude. And uh, <laughs> I went out and I, I head kicked him, blocked it took me down again and then i was like fuck well and the rounds are two minutes so yeah it's like virtually nothing it's it's a blink of an eye and then i remember um i was like fuck it i'm gonna shoot a takedown on him and wrestling was not my standpoint like my strong point at all shot a double leg on him got stuff sat out first time i've ever done that ever you know and then i sat out and then i got on top and i just started pounding this fool out and i was really close to finishing it. i thought i had it. i thought the, the ref was gonna stop it yeah yeah you were but, cracking um, him I remember that. And he was like, like, and and it's funny because like in the moment, like you don't realize what's kind of happening because you're just like, I'm going to fucking hit this motherfucker. Like, Ooh, but there's all these like strategic positions that I could have taken. Like his legs were open. He was like, he was like an open guard. I should have went to full mount. I should have just started threatening submissions. I should have done all those things, but I didn't because I was so worried about trying to knock this motherfucker out. Well, it's experience too. Exactly. I mean, it's just experience. And at the time, like after rewatching the tape, I'm like, fuck, I could have, I could have beat this motherfucker. And I felt my arms like give out towards the end. Yeah. And uh, I lost that fight, but you know, it, it, that fight taught me, I was like, all right, well, I got to start wrestling. I got to start doing jujitsu. And that's when I started falling more in love. And with then that. you didn't do one more fucking fight. Well, you know what? That's when I got, that's when I started getting injuries and stuff like that. That's when I started getting like the concussions and things like that. And then I just was like, you know what? Listen. And then, I, then I started liking coaching way more and then it became more of my life. And, and I then I like, walked into his life. And he's like, Nick Dunn, you're a piece of trash, but nah, I was like, Nick Dunn, this is going to be a burly, tattooed Irishman. <laughs> and I came out this little... You're like a little, small Chinaman. Cute, yeah. A little twink Chinaman. This, this little fucking gookie monster came out to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, hey, I'm Nick Dunn. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, chink. <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I'm Nick. Yeah. What, what do you what mean? It's me. <laughs> Hello. He said, one, Hello. two, one, two, one, one two. two. That's all we did. Just yep. one, two. one, two, one, two, one, two, swip, one, two, swip, swip, <laughs> swip, whoa, swip. whoa, whoa, swip. <laughs> oh my God, that's such a good impression. I was so me. angry. I was wow. so angry when I met him. I was, this guy fucking duped me. What's your, I was like, what's your real last name, dude? It's done. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mr. Yeah. Chang. Yeah. See you later. Whatever, wing hop. Wing hop. <laughs> Let's fucking do this, guy. Damn. Um, we were, ta- we were talking about our old the old video clips of me, like back in the day when I used to record myself. <laughs> and I remember like, when I first recorded myself, I was like, dog, these hands are so fast. I wish somebody would catch these. <laughs> right? And I looked at the video. I was like, damn, somebody put this shit in slow-mo, huh? <laughs> I was like, who fuck with this video? Who changed like, this who video? Who fuck with me? the speed of the video, man? <laughs> shit, fuck that. <laughs> you have gotten a lot better, though. Like, even though the clips I see you hit in the bag now, I'm like, oh. Ooh, David's got his little, oh, David little some swag, bro. Moves it doesn't look that like that when I spar, though. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Well, it's always harder in person. Yeah, like, yeah, it just takes practice. That object moves. You're not sparring every day, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know. In time. It is. In time. We'll get there. I don't bro. have Come much on. time now, dude. It's like, <sighs> the first year, though, I was really, really into it. Like, mm-hmm. I got super into it. Yeah. And then after a while, it just started to hurt. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're sparring. It becomes now. a grind, you know? Becomes that's what a- it is. That's what it is. Like, that's why you really have to love this shit, man. Like, if you're not about that fight life and you think you could just do this part time and you think it's just all fun and games and you plan on competing, that's when motherfuckers find out, like, you're not really about this life and you get fucked up, man. You get hurt. It's hard. I, I, it's definitely the, the the rounds and repetition is yeah. the biggest thing because you can't see those improvements until you stop and you try to come back. Exactly. Again. Right. And exactly. it's like, oh, exactly. shit, that those everyday week, the every week sparring thing helped a lot. Oh, yeah. And you don't register it until you stop doing it. Right. Yeah. So exactly. then I'm like, oh, I'm awkward again. I can't see openings. Right. I'm like, oh, this is this is this Your is timings off. off. Timing is off. off. Yeah. It's I, not like riding a bike. You can't yeah. just come back to it, you know. Yeah, so there's no. I don't have like work. a rhythm. I'm like, oh, this is weird. I don't know what I'm. I don't know my feet position or anything like You're that. You're thinking so. too much. Yeah. Way yeah. too much, man. Especially when uh we we went to go train at Aqua's place, and then we were just light sparring. I was like, oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> I was like, this is trouble. Like I don't see anything, and I'm like, where's a hole? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like looking for a hole to hit somebody. I'm like, I don't see anything <laughs> happening. So uh, lo and behold, I teeped the bottom of my foot again. Come on, baby. And I was, I was out for three weeks. All right. That's the David So signature injury right now. I have cracked this the bottom of my foot on a knee twice now. Fuck. Bad. With the teep? You teep somebody? Well, it's because I just kind of get lazy and I just throw the foot out versus, you know, chambering it and trying to pierce somebody. Yeah. You'll throw it from like this. 
Yeah, it's like the worst thing ever. And so is it the top of your foot or the bottom of your foot? It's the, the ball of the, the, foot. Ball of the, ball the foot. foot. So like I, I was out for like damn near three weeks. Couldn't Fuck. I couldn't walk for the first week. Damn. Yeah, it was that like my foot my foot was a balloon. Yeah, <laughs> oh shit, dude. Yeah, so it was pretty bad. Fuck. But I feel bad keeping somebody in sparring because that shit hurts. Yeah, yeah but you, but got, you gotta do it. It's the equalizer, dude. Did I just kick people? Is that what I'm supposed to do? You think Jason feels bad when he teeps people? No, he doesn't. And no, he has teeped, no. he has teeped the spirit out of me. I don't feel bad when he teeps people and shit, dude. I hate that dude. I hate sparring. I want to spar that dude again. Every time, every time after I spar, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking crack this dude. I love him, but I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this dude up next time, dude. I love him, but like, That's, goddamn, when he teeps are me, so drastic. He has knocked me down with teeps before, where I just lost the air out of my fucking body. Yeah, he, just, that. Uh, he yeah. gets me hard. Yeah, he, his teeps are good. He's got gnarly He's ass sneaky. That's his shit, dude. That's his money shot. He just you know? gets right in. Yeah. And I can't read it either. So I'm, I'm always trying to he has a like, system, sweep dude. it out the way. I just can't do it. Yeah. And when hard. he doesn't throw it, you know, like, oh, he's just taking it easy. And then yeah. he gets you to think about it. And then he hits you with some other shit. His stupid little fucking combos to my face. Did his stupid jab, hook, body. He always gets that. He punches you like 18 times with yeah, one yeah. hand. His <laughs> stupid fucking Lennox Lewis his half jab. Backwards hat and shit looking all cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cool guy from the like 90s and shit. It's fucking Jason. It's fucking Jason out, saying know? crazy shit the whole time. Fucking talking <laughs> thousand miles a minute. Dude, Jason's the fuck. only person that'll beat my ass as he's giving me advice on how not to get my ass beat. Yeah. The whole time, too. <laughs> the whole time. He's not even stopping at he all. He goes, hey, when I hook you in the face, blah. He goes, make sure you keep that glove up. Thanks, man. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. I can't feel my thumb, but cool. And I'm just talking like Mike Tyson. Hey, so like, what's, what am I supposed to do next, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what else is next? If I come here, do a little slip and it's coming here around here. <laughs> that's pretty. That's a, that's a, you're, hey, dude, you're really good at impressions. Hey, you don't know, know how you find you, useless dude? information yeah. and you just watch like a bunch of rape documentaries? Hey, dude, I don't. Okay, that's not. What's going on, man? You're painting me in a bad light. <laughs> no. Hey, you're painting me in a bad light, dude. You want to tell us something? We talk about this already. I just like when justice is served. Nick bro. Dunn is Chris oh. D'Elia's best friend. Oh, we are. We hang all the time. We yep. kick it. He is also in a text thread. I produce his podcast. No mm-hmm. big deal. With D'Elia know. and the guy from mm-hmm. that '70s show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do his podcast. Sean Masterson's and Jeffrey Epstein's podcast. They have a new podcast his, coming. Out. Jeffrey Epstein's podcast is going to be dropping next Friday. Wow. Yeah, perfect. And the title of that podcast is "I Be Touching." <laughs> I be <laughs> the resurrection. The resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He's doing a podcast on his island. You'll never find me. (laughs) He's like, I'm alive. I'm back, baby. And I be touching. Those allegations were 100% true. That's what what it's going to be about. I can't wait. It's going to be a great podcast for you guys. I I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Break I have Podcast. To be so bad. So thank you. Yeah, you wrapping this you up. look like it. You I'm just stupid like, son of a bitch. <laughs> you didn't uh, even drink anything of this lovely liquor. Yeah, this is I'm, good, dude. I'm buzzed. I'm almost break a leader, buzzed. dude. Uh, yeah, we've been drinking a lot. Hey, sign us off before you have to get a new couch. Yeah, we have some healthy pores. So we have about <laughs> five more minutes before we sign off. Wait. <laughs> and, uh, no. Well, you guys can catch you guys where? On Instagram. It's my name, Patrick.T. Right. That was smooth. Well, you guys can catch me at Patrick Tita Riley. And you'll find me next to me, Patrick Gold. <laughs> tequila, baby. That tequila got me, baby. Uh, it's my name, dude. I, it's fuck. my name, dude. It's my name. And, and you can find me at Nick the Ear <laughs> on Instagram. And then we also have our big mad podcast if you guys want to oh, check yeah, that out. Yeah. That's right. When's the last time we're going to do it, dude? We haven't done that shit. In yeah, a long it's it's time. it's been a little bit. It's uh, we've been everyone's been kind of busy, but we're gonna we're gonna release another one next week. Ah, sons of bitches! Come on, baby. See y'all next time.